<coughs> Hello, hi, it's me, it's Cass, and boy, oh boy, howdy. Man, oh man. Has the time finally come? Are we really doing this? It's Hoshi Womi Arahito for the Famicom, released 1987, published by Hot B, which, uh, for those of you who don't know, stands for He Is Over There Because. No idea what that's meant to mean, no idea why they chose that as the name of their company, or if that's even the real subtitle, it's just on the title screen of one of their games. Anyway, developed by uh, another. Just another. You know, one of the many developers. It was developed by another one of those. And uh, this is Densetsu no Kusuge. The legendary shit game. And yeah, as someone who has played this game multiple times. Yeah, I'd say it more than lives up to that title. Uh, <laughs> and you know, we're going to play through the entire thing on stream. I'm making this commitment right now. I'm making this this solemn vow, uh, and this is going to come back to bite me, to be sure. But hell or high water, beginning to end, Hoshiwomi Yohiro uh, on stream tonight. Uh, before we get underway with it, uh, if I can delay just a little bit longer, if I can put it off just a little bit longer, uh, I would like to say that I'm playing this game because, one, it is the 35th anniversary of this game, with it being a 1987 release, and it being 2023 now, October 27th, 1987, when it first released. But there's also another reason, and this is going to get the, the stream started on a rip-roaring high note. This is going to be uh, really just a great way, like set a really good mood for the stream, is I'm also playing this because <laughs> I was working on... A uh, improved translation, an improved hack of this game. Uh, I was actually working on this with someone uh, by the name of Rainy Baker, uh, who is no longer with us as of a, a few weeks ago. Uh, one of the projects we had in the works together was doing a, a improved hack of this. As it stands, we're going to be playing. There is an English translation. It is very partial, and it's it's not very good. It's the King Mike translation that we'll be playing today. Uh, as far as the work I did with Rainy on this, I don't, I don't know if it'll ever see the light of day. I don't know how to access that, uh, truth be told. Sad to say. Uh, she left me a few gifts, though. She left me a, a translation of the instruction manual for this, so we can gleam some information from that. Uh, we were also going to write an article together on this. It was going to be an end goal. She was even going to probably, if I had convinced her, join me on commentary for a stream of, of this nature. Uh, the, just this kind of stream. But, uh... Uh, needless to say, uh, that's not possible now. So, uh, this one's for you, Raimi. Uh, th this is this is uh, this is me taking care of this game. This is me finishing this bit of business best I can. And yeah, let's get into it, shall we? Uh, you can see I'm going a, a little all out on this one. I'm uh, I'm really putting the work in. I made some fancy graphics. If I was smart, I'd have like found a way to hook these into the the values in in memory for the uh, the emulator, and these would update in real time. I am not good at this, uh, so we won't be doing that. <laughs> uh, yes, this is the King Mike translation. So this changes the title screen, uh, among many things in this game. To read as Stargazers. And Stargazers is, uh, I suppose it's a translation of the title. Uh, there's also some Japanese fan projects that have, uh, sought to remake this game. And they go by the name of Stargazers as well. But, uh, we're just gonna be calling it Hoshiwo Mirohito. And, uh, there's nothing to do it but the press start. I'm pressing start. My controller's working. Oh, of course. You don't use the start button, you press the A button. That was silly of me. And so our adventure begins with uh, no context, no preamble, no prologue. Uh, luckily, we do have an excerpt from the manual, uh, which Rainy translated, so I'm gonna 
Show that on screen right now. And this will give us the plot we need. And you know, again, uh, it, it's not unreasonable to not have the plot in a game of this vintage uh, explained within the game. Uh, so, go to the manual, and what does it say there? In the future, there is a boy named Minami who doesn't remember who he is or where he came from, but he is being hunted. There are mechanical robots, the army guard, wild creatures, and death psychics all want him dead because he is special. In the Mega City Arc City, which is run by a computer called Crew 3, Peace is kept by a strict computer mind control. Everyone behaves efficiently as Crew 3 demands, but has no free will. But there were people the computer could not exert influence over. They were labeled psychics and hunted mercilessly. Captured psychics were taken to Arc City to be dealt with. However, four psychics, all children, managed to escape the worldwide hunt. The whole world now depends on them meeting and working together to save everyone. Well, uh, that that's that's what we're doing, and we are playing as Minami. He's the uh, the first party member, the only party member we have right now. We'll find the rest in time. But uh, yeah, let's just start wandering. Uh, word of warning, there's, they will be grinding in this video, uh, in this stream, in this telecast. Alright, so this is exactly what I wanted for our first fight. Uh, we're gonna start, uh, picking out some of the issues of this game straight away. Uh, you notice that we're level zero. It would be great if we had some ESP abilities that were, like, powerful attacks. We don't have any of those. We don't have any weapons, we don't have any armor. Uh... And more importantly, we don't have an escape. We can't run away from fights at this current stage in the game. We'll have to unlock that. So, funny thing, this guy here is way beyond our level right now. Our level of zero. Well, give us a shot. Not doing any damage. All right, auspicious start. 15 damage, which took us from 5 to 3 which warrants a, uh, another explanation. The hit points displayed near our character, the manual explains it, they dropped the last digit. So if we had five health at the start, we actually had 50 health. And now when it says three, we have 35. So not doing so hot, right out the gate. Ooh, that's really not great. Okay. Uh, so what, that's like 15 health? Uh, I don't know if we can take another attack like that. Oh, we did 3 damage! I think he has like 24 health, and now we're, uh, no. Well. Uh, you, you can tell this is not uh, fully translated, as mentioned before. And that is Hoshi Womirahito. I'm glad y'all could join me on this one, and uh, not yet. So, uh, we, we, we can run into a fair bit of that. We may run into a fair bit of that over the course of this playthrough, uh, where we just encounter enemies that are way above our pay grade, and there's not a damn thing we can do about it. You can't run away. You can't just, like, defend yourself for an infinite amount of turns and hope they run away. Uh, we just have to grind. We just have to, uh, get good, as the kids say. Alright. I think Salamander I can beat. Uh, I should mention the King Mike translation patch that we are playing with has an optional, uh, additional patch that, uh, improves- increases the game speed, makes it run- everything run a little bit faster between the text and your character speed and everything like that. But, uh... I elected to play this at the original speed, uh, because I'm a sicko, and I like to make my my viewers suffer. Yeah, okay, so I may have miscalculated. Oh, wait, we still have, like, a couple of health points left. Oh, okay! All right, we have a win. And now we are faced with a new problem. We don't have any healing items, or ways to heal. Except for one. Now, you may not have noticed, but we actually started next to a village. We actually have a hometown. One problem. It's invisible. Let's uh, look around town for a minute. 
One by one, everyone in Deus felt, fell sick to the mysterious disease. Nah, that's not my problem. This ain't Deus. <laughs> this is a present from me to <laughs> you. Thank you for the subscription, uh, DHC Ben. Uh, the six months in advance. No kidding, huh? <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to play this for six months then. If this is the content that you crave, my friend. Ah, oh, welcome to the Mammoth Village. You're safe here. And as safe as will be anywhere in this game. Uh, so there's some shopkeepers over here. We don't have any money. Uh, that's a potion mixer on the right. We don't have any ingredients to mix potions as of yet. Uh, fell temperature ratio acts. So was the invisible town thing intentional or did they just fuck up? That is a mystery. Uh, that is a mystery we are yet to solve. Uh, we were doing our research and, you know, these were sort of competent developers. I think it was just... I think there's an intentionality. My guess, my gut feeling is there is an intentionality to having an invisible village. That's supposed to be a hidden village, right? Like the Leaf Village in Naruto, I guess. I don't watch Naruto, I just... Uh, no, like, things through osmosis about it. Uh, so yeah, I assume that it's meant to be, like, you're meant to stumble into it by going left on the first frame of the game, and then you realize, oh, that's where the village is. What do you have to say? The villagers' combined power couldn't save them from destruction. The village spirit has vanished. Yeah, that will crush morale. The, the spirit will really ooh, suffer for it. Alright, this is our salvation. Hello, Manami. Have you heard my story? Well, not as of yet. I can shield with my abilities, but I am too old to become your ally. Well, what good are you to me? However, I can heal your wounds. Oh, okay. Feel free to come anytime. A girl with power like mine was captured in Ark City. You'll need to ally with her. Now, if we speak to her again, we can hear that story as many times as we like, but more practically, we've heard your story. Now, treat some wounds. Take care now. Alright, and now, if I open up this menu, which I open by pressing the A button, uh, I can check our strength. And yes, we have 50 hit points out of 50 hit points. That's where we want to be. But we might as well check the rest of town while we're here. Did you come to begin a seance? I, I believe this is for reviving... Yes, yeah, so if you bring the revival potion back to my place, I can revive the dead. Okay, so... You still need a potion of revival. You still need to mix one of those to give it to this guy so he can revive your your comrades. You know, I would assume I could just use it on my own, but... Okay, and we're faced with a quandary here. You can't push people out of the way. You gotta wait for them. Uh, this can royally fuck things up later down the line. I noticed that there's an old man I forgot to talk to, so we'll have to, uh, get his input on the subject. Be sure to follow the recipe to create the revival potion, Yamu A. Ruku. We're gonna pick up various different kinds of nuts and seeds and fruits and the like. I think they're all called nuts in the game, but nuts to that, I say. There's a Ruku nut. If we just keep walking back and forth, we can stock up on this. Uh, truth be told, uh... We're not going to really engage so much with the, the crafting in this, though it is, I, I will give it commendation. It is a novel idea to have crafting in a game this early. Uh, certainly contemporary RPGs, you know, likes of Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest, which, by the way, came out the same year uh, as this, uh, just for a point of comparison. Uh, they didn't have crafting systems, as far as I can recall. But this had a, uh, instead of, like, you know, having a... We, we do have an inventory with, like, items in it. We don't have any at the moment. But, uh, that's, that's not, I believe, where the, the potions and the like go. Uh, can we walk around this? Nope, we're just gonna get kicked out of the village, so we're not seeing the other half of town. Not yet, anyway. Alright, this is dangerous territory we're in now. Uh... So here's what the first hour of this game is going to look like. Uh, maybe not the first hour. We'll, we'll see how efficiently I can uh, do this. We'll see, what, we'll see what luck has in store for us. Uh, what I'd like to do, ideally, is level up a little bit. But every time we get into a winnable fight... Like, this one should be winnable. We're going to have to go back to the village. We're going to have to heal again. And we have to hope that we don't die, either. 
Uh, Video Game King asked, did Ultima 3 have the bullshit herb mixing magic system that 4 had? If it did, chances are that would have influenced this. I don't believe Ultima 3 had crafting mixing, things of that nature. I think that was a f innovation with 4. So I will say, uh, the original Ultima, they do a weird thing in that game where the, the final act of that game takes place in space. Very, like, contrary to the fantasy setting of the game, of the rest of the game. And uh, just bear that in the back of your mind as we uh, as we play this one. No reason. You finally oh. made it, friends. Thank you very much, Dream Harrier. Uh, with raiding with a party, thank you kindly. We're uh, just getting, we're just embarking on this this grand adventure of the legendary shit game Hoshi Wo Mirihito. Let's uh, heal up again. Yes, I've heard your story. Yes, I would like you to heal my wounds. Now, let's, uh, let's see. Oh, and I should probably update my little graphic, because I have to do this manually, because, uh, again, I'm not a professional. Uh, <laughs> All right, and like magic, there we are, level one. And, uh, yes. Okay, so now we have 150 health. Uh, Dream Harrier Live says, Hi, my proxy can't seem to load the stream tonight. Hope you're having a good birthday. Not my birthday, that's in a few days. I got three days till my birthday. I think. I think that's how time works. Uh, this is Hoshi Womirihito's birthday. And, uh, what a celebration we, we hope to have for it. Alright, so I should have uh, a psychic ability I can use now. Limited use. I only have so many psychic points, but... Uh, we, we at least have 150 health, so that means that we should be uh, a fair bit more survivable. Can we survive this? I guess it depends on how much damage this does. Oh, cross your fingers, folks. Three damage, that's about as much as if I hit them in the face with, like a, with a fist. Alright. Uh... Kur Jaden says this is functionally different than the original. Uh, this is this is just the uh, the translate the King Mike translation, the ROM hack translation. Uh, there is a Switch release of this uh, that came out in the past couple years, if I recall correctly, uh, and that does add some features like rewind, uh, serial save support, rather than having to copy down like these overlong passwords. Uh, I think it also has double speed movement, but uh, that ain't the version I'm playing. This is uh, more or less the original. More or less just a horrible, horrible attempt at translating the original. Uh, it was an issue I would have loved to have solved. Me and Rainey were working on it. On, on doing an improved translation on this. But uh, that, that project is uh, currently dead in the water. Uh, that's, not, I, that's not the best choice of words. Uh, I, ugh, fuck. It, it's, Rainey's going to loom large over this stream. She, she was my friend. And, uh, we had, we had goals, we had ambitions for this game in particular, but, uh, fuck, what can you do? I'm, I'm thinking we can get another fight in. We have enough health that I should be able to survive long enough to get another kill in. We have a couple goals right now. Uh, one is just to generally level. Two is to get some gold in our pockets. Uh... In that gold in our pockets is going to allow us to buy weapons and armor, which we will desperately need. Alright, no jingle at the end there, so we haven't leveled up again quite yet. Oh, uh, Dreamy Harrier points out that sometimes hacking games for uh, translating is too hard. Yeah, but, uh... Yeah, so King Mike, the way this King Mike translation works is they expand the ROM to 256 kilobytes. From its original, like, what was it, like, 64? I think it was a 64 kilobyte cartridge. So, uh... And that gave them the space they needed to insert, like, extra characters and, and stuff of that nature. But, uh... You know. You can only do so much with that. And I, I think they abandoned the project at a certain point. I think they, they figured they would translate all the quote-unquote essential dialogue in this. The menus and whatnot. And even some of the menus are still a little... <laughs> There, there's some incorrect information uh, that this game will purport to us, which will make life difficult. Okay, we might be fucked already. Uh, <laughs> wait, I do have ESP. I'd like to go backwards and uh, use my ESP power. Mash in that B button. Alright, the B button doesn't work. Like it all. Anywhere. 
if you go down the wrong tree in a menu, especially in a fight, especially in combat, uh, better commit to it. Uh, you don't have a choice in the matter. So as much as I would love to go backwards right now and, and use Psychic Ball on these guys, I pressed A on fight by accident, by reflex. So we're just gonna have to live with it. Assuming we live. Yeah, so there's a few menus where the B button will back you out of it. A few, like, you know, interface things, UI things, but, but not in combat, which is where you really want to make sure you're not doing the wrong moves, really want to, like, pick your spots best you can. And, you know, having ESP at the top instead of fight, uh, so that you always, by default, select ESP. Like such. Let's say I wanted to go back. Let's say I didn't have any psychic power, right? Any, like, any psychic points left. Uh, I would just whiff the attack without any psychic power. Just be like, you don't have any power for this. You lose a turn. So that can be uh, a little frustrating, I would think. And again, my psychic powers at this point, at this point in time, are uh, not not the most powerful. Ball is, you know, it'll get us there. There are enemies that can't take damage from just our fighting. So for them, it it, it behooves us. Oh, no. I was trying to go back to the village. But, uh... Fingers crossed, folks. At least we haven't got another Returner or, uh, or a Chaser, God forbid. There are worse enemies we could be fighting right now. Oh, boy. Yeah, uh... There are some weapons we can buy. Uh, we're saving up just for the, uh, the 300 gold one. And they ran away, which means I get no experience, which means that that was all a waste of time. Uh, Video Game King asks, so people have looked at the code. Have they found whether the game eating bee presses is a coding error or an intentional design choice? I think it's oversight. I, I'm going to uh, chalk it up to oversight. I'm going to chalk it up to the developers not thinking it was just important. Because uh, I mean, there's absolutely menus that B cancels out of. And I don't know how they would program it in such a way where every single B-press gets eaten on the combat menu or what have you. I, I think it's as, as simple as them just being like, just not have an idea. I, I mean, there's there's some design decisions in this that are very conscious and ones that are that read just out of ignorance, just not really understanding what like an RPG should entail. And, and to be clear, 1987, we had a few RPGs by this point, from the West, from the East, from all over. And, you know, just because Final Fantasy and uh, Dragon Quest launched this year, you know, you know, sort of set a bar, set a standard, it doesn't mean that there weren't, like, other things they could have looked to. And they absolutely did look to other things. Red Mercer in the chat points out Hydlide. Uh, yeah, pr precisely. You know, that whole action RPG job. This is more traditional RPG, obviously, but, like, at Ultima. You know, Ultima's big in Japan, especially Ultima 3. Uh, Beam Splash says, I can't believe I was born a year and a day after the classic, claiming it for the Scorpios. Damn right. Scorpios rise up. Wizardry also big in Japan. Yes, thank you. How do I it even exist? Listen for the jingle. Ah, sweet. We are now level 2. I don't remember if that gives us another ability... But let me update the chart to at least say level 2. Uh, in case you're wondering how I'm updating this chart, I have a copy of uh, Adobe Fireworks open in the background. And I have an image file. And I am updating the image file. It has all these nice, cool little layers in it. And I, I change out the layers, and then I save the file. And then OBS automatically loads it up and refreshes it. I'm still using an image editing program from 20 years ago. Because I refuse to learn how to use anything else. <laughs> I think we have enough health that we can keep on... Yeah. It's, you know... We, we could head back to the village, or I could just run to more random encounters anyway. Despite my best efforts. Well, that one didn't want any of this business. Uh, Red Mercer says, Highlight was very influential because more than one person played it and said I could eat a programming manual and shit a better game than this. Nah. Highlight was respected in its time. 
and, and there's reasons to respect it. We have an article up on the site, badgamehalloffame.com. Uh, check out Virtual Hide Line, where I go into the entire history of every hide line. And uh, talk about why it's important. But, you know, I, <laughs> does, does it hold up? I, I think it's a genuine question you could ask. I like Virtual Hide Line a lot. I think Virtual Hide Line Saturn holds up. So you already know I'm a sicko. But does the original Hide Light hold up? Holds up better than this! <laughs> uh, we should check our ESP to see if we have a second ability. Okay, so we do have Psychic Hurricane. Which uh, you would think is a move that could probably like take out more than one enemy at a time. Like a hurricane, that's like a big like nature coming through. And you can also see here that we can decide how powerful we want the attack to be. Using our psychic power points, uh, we can invest a certain amount. Uh, it scales up with every notch. We'll just do the weakest version of it. And it will attack one enemy at a time. It will do five damage, which is actually very effective uh, for this early in the game. But I will uh, conserve. Yeah, there we go. That paid off. Dr. Tsuya asks, I just want to know the thought process behind re-releasing on Switch. Like, have we not suffered enough? Okay, so... You gotta remember that uh, Japan treats Kusoge, treats uh, their shit games a little differently than we do. Uh, they have more of a reverence for them. That's a, that's a country where Death Crimson can uh, go on to be, like, savaged by magazines and by critic uh, and consumer reviews, and then go on to make a profit because of that. Uh, we're, we're a game like... Uh, Fuck, I'm looking for other examples. But the, the point I'm trying to make here, the broader point I'm trying to make, is that this is a country where... A sort of Sodan was the point I was going to try to make. Where it became Emperor uh, Kusoge, Emperor Sodan, uh, off the back of uh, Beep uh, Sega Magazine, Beep Genesis, Beep, Beep, Beep Mega Drive, I should say. Uh, constantly, like, riffing on it, having the bottom 100 of their reader rankings. Right? So th this is a country where, like, if a game is infamous enough, if a game is bad enough, it lives forever in their minds. Okay, this is a real tester right here. So I, I think what it comes down to is just like... Th there's, you know, the ironic appreciation. There's a genuine appreciation, too, I think, that pairs with it. I think they understand that, like... That people would be buying this on the Switch, right? Would appreciate the fact that they, they threw everything they had at this game. Another threw everything they had... Uh, for better or for worse... At this game. And what we got is a mess, but there's ambition behind it. Like... I'm gonna shit a lot on this game, uh, you know, uh, out, of, out of necessity, out of frustration with this game, but I, I would never say that, like, the developers weren't lacking in ambition. Oh, I should also mention, I should have mentioned this at the start, this game's like a remake of a PC-88 game? Not quite a remake. Uh, me and Rainy were trying to get to the bottom of this. So there's a PC-88 game from 1984 called In the Psychic City. Uh, it was also published by Hot B. We don't know who developed it. it the developer credit is just Hot B. And, uh... So, we don't know the staff on this game or that game. But what is speculated, what I believe to be true, what I think there might be some anecdotal evidence to, su to suggest, is that the scenario writer of S In the Psychic City... Oh my god! 60 damage? Are you fucking with me? <sighs> okay, this is danger territory now. Psychic Ball, don't fail me now. Remember, we can't run away. Holy shit! This run might be over. I have some plans. I, I, I have some things I could do here. I think they're sparing me. So No, they're not sparing me. I, I forgot, I have a lot of health now. So I, I can take a couple hits. Not much more, though. Anyway, in the Psychic City, it, it's a game. Uh, has the same fucking plot as this game. It's psychics, it's, it's cyberpunk, it's futuristic, it's, it's psychics are persecuted. There's a computer that runs the show. Oh my god, we made it. We actually survived. 14 XP, I should get like 400 for that. Yeah, they can just throw that to you. That could be the first enemy you saw in the game. And they could just wipe you out immediately, and there's nothing you can do about it, because you can't run away from fights this early in the game. 
So wouldn't that be a bitch if you just, like, kept starting the game, that kept being the first fight you got into, and you just assumed, oh, this game is malicious, there's, there's no way to play this game? Anyway, in the Psychic City... Uh, yeah, is, I think what happened is, the way I sort of speculated is, it's sort of like a Don Doler situation for any bad film heads out there, who is a director that made effectively the same movie, like, a dozen times, about an alien touching down, and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> this is a present from me to Thank you. Thank you for the subscription, Magic Mouse. Uh, how long till I cheat? Uh, we'll see. Anyway, so... Uh, I think what happened was the scenario writer for that original in the Psychic City uh, didn't feel like he did his concept justice, and he kept working to sort of... I didn't mean to do his I actually wanted to do fight, but uh, here we are. Because I can't back out of menus. I think he was just trying to perfect his vision. I think he, like, wanted to make the game he had in his head. He wanted to tell the story he had in his head, and when it didn't go through the first time, he tried it again here. So, it's not exactly the same game. Obviously, the map and stuff is different. The characters are different. It's the same premise. And it's the same, like, even the same schools of ESP, where there's uh, there's break spells, shield spells, jump spells, and uh, telepathy spells. Those are the four schools of, of psychic power. Does the number on the character portrait mean anything at all? Yes, that is our health, with the last digit removed. So we have something like 310 health right now, CD San Juniex. Uh, but they cut off that last number. Okay, so we're fighting three at once now. My goal here is to get 300 gold or to get to level four, whichever happens first, because uh, there's some things we want to do besides just grinding. In fact, it would behoove us to do one of those things sooner rather than later before we grind too much. But, you know, I'm, I'm trying to give the authentic experience. It's been 30 minutes, and we have not moved too far in this. Which is incredible to me that people would watch this, by the way. But, uh, y'all must be sickos like me. Alright, at least we get a bunch of XP for this, right? No level up still. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. For a change of scenery... I'm gonna heal up first. We're gonna head north. We're gonna head towards uh, some, some places, uh, advance the plot a little bit. We can at least like survive like a couple encounters now. We're like level two. We have enough health for it. Oh, I should mention uh, when we level up and it increases our max HP and our max psychic points, it doesn't restore us. It doesn't top us off. And uh, we don't have any potions with us right now. We haven't. We, we can't mix any. Well, I could just go south here. Uh, Dream Harry says, Sickos tend to attract other sickos. It's like stand users. That's very true. <laughs> Let's head north. Well, we are going to have to get into some fights along the way. I, I should have expected as much. Three damage. I, get these, I guess these guys probably have like five or six health. Maybe seven. There's a guide. There's, there's a few guides. There's a few game FAQs you could uh, consult. Uh, the most helpful one is written by a Griever GF, Griever underscore GF, and it is a in-depth list of uh, every like value in the game, every item in the game, and every like enemy and their health and the damage they do. Super thorough work. And the other guides are by A. F. A. Schultz, I believe. And those are, like your your general walkthroughs and some maps as in the area. So both come in handy. Uh, the A. Schultz guide is sort of hampered by the fact that uh, it's based on this English translation that we're playing right now. So it, it misunderstands a few things because the translation doesn't do a good job conveying them. Like how to use ID cards. Well, you notice we have a whole list of potential ID cards we could use. Uh, and, and those will be very important in time. But, uh... There we go. There's also a reason why I have all the attacks listed on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, and that is because uh, once we start to unlock other characters and uh, we get their spell lists, uh, all the spells will be completely out of order or incorrectly labeled for every character beyond Minami here. So I literally need to look on the right-hand side of the screen. I need to look at that image so I can see what each uh, 
attack actually corresponds to. See if they're actually attacks or not. Did I really commit to playing this entire game? Can I pretend that was a lie? Can I just... Can I back out of that? <laughs> Saying that I was gonna play this entire game in a single sitting? I have some things. I have some ways to speed this up for when, when the need absolutely becomes a need. When it arises, and it will. That's a level up. Oh, for fuck's sake. But we do need the experience, so... Well, let me first of all... Level 3 on the image. No new spells for it. I'm, I'm gonna call them spells. It's easier to call these spells. I'm, I'm RPG brain poisoned. Let's just use Hurricane. Let's hope that knocks him out the game. Good, 7. That's that's good. That's good damage. I can't use it again, so if I deal with it like a returner in the next couple seconds, if, if the next step I take is uh, that, we're, we're screwed. And we found another village. You may notice that when we're walking, occasionally the game will just, like, stop for a frame. That's because those are the frames where other NPCs are moving, and we can't move at the same time they do. Just a little quirk of how this game was programmed. What do you have to say? Welcome to the tool store. What do you have? Bomb or forge key? Well, we don't need either of these. Yet. What about you, girl? What do you gotta say to me? Cough, cough. Yeah, this is the town of Deus. This is where everyone is sick. Uh, we'll see if we can do something about that for them. We'll see if we can help them out. Zaws, won't you listen? When you were young, I brought you here from the dumps of Ark City. A mysterious disease has spread through this village. Please try to help us. If you're searching for the boy with the jump ability, he's being held captive in an underground lair south of here. Please come back here when you find him. Alright, so that gives us two things we could be focusing on right now. Which, again, I know what I need to do in this game. Uh, you have to follow the recipe to create the aim potion. A, Ruku, Iku. Alright, remember that. We've called this everlasting disease the Skin Rinse Disease. Yeah, sure, that's a name for it. I guess it means you gotta wash your hands constantly, which is probably as good practice in general. Now, I know something the villagers don't know. And that is that they have the cure right beyond this wall. The nuts you need to make it, or at least one of the nuts you need to make the, the potion, is that bush right there. Small problem that we can't jump over this. Yet. So we'll just have to exit the village for now. We'll just have to, to walk on out. We can't help him right now. But uh, we, we can hopefully help in time. And to be clear, for people who are wondering what the build-up this game is, why this game is so special beyond... Well, okay. Before I go all down that point, you may, well, you may notice that we walked out of that town, and we are now back... at the beginning of the game. That's gonna happen a few times. There's a few exits that are... The, the, the exit location, the place you're meant to go to when you leave, which should be, like, right outside the door of that place, right? Aren't marked. So the game goes to its default position, which is the starting point of the game. So yeah, save this a trip. Because I had to heal anyway, right? Uh, let's just quickly check. How much max health does that give us? Uh, body. Normal. Hit points. 530. Psychic points, 165. That's a couple hurricanes. That's good. Uh, you may, also, may notice that we have two break. Uh, our psychic specialty as Benami is the ability to break down certain walls. Not all of them, but uh, some of them. But ultimately, outside of one or two instances where it's necessary to do that, it is completely pointless. Especially given the next character we're gonna unlock. But, uh, yeah, so to 
sort of uh, hook people in who are wondering, like, what's so compelling about this game? Uh, it is the fact that this game is completely lawless at a certain point. The things the game wants you to do, gives you the power to do intentionally, are absolutely wild once you start to get into the other characters, namely the next character. Like, all conventional law of design gets tossed out the fucking window feasibly, like, within 10 or 15 minutes of right now. If, if we if we buckle up and, and hunker down and, uh, and focus on getting to where we need to get to. First, we gotta survive these fights. Oh, they ran away, so no experience for us. Again. Assholes. Okay. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, random encounters are a little brutal in this, huh? These drunk are the, the best enemies to fight, though, because they die in one hit. And give us a, a decent amount of XP for it, relative to, you know, the work we're putting in. Oh my god! Okay. Okay, alright. That guy looks like trouble. I'm gonna throw everything I got at this guy. Because I, I don't want to deal with him. 18 damage? Good. Yeah. Maybe overkill? I don't know. I don't know how much HP he has offhand. Uh, there is a character, uh, Misa, who can tell us like the exact stat values, like how much health enemies have. But uh, we're not unlocking her for a while. Uh, Video Game King. The more I study this, the clearer it becomes the game has genuinely intriguing ideas, an overworld that feels genuinely impressive, putting all your power behind that one blast of ESP, buckling under numerous errors, villages about properly set exits. Uh, you ain't seen the half of it yet. Flack is a little more powerful than junk. Yeah. I already want to run back to the village. I, I already want to get out of here, but... We're gonna persevere. I think we have enough health that we can tank some of these encounters, just using fights. If we have to deal with another Returner, that might be a run-under. Because he can do 70 damage, 60 damage a pop. So, uh, you know, cross your fingers. 22 XP is a good chunk of XP. Okay. So, there's a couple things I want to do in this direction. I'm going to... Hmm. I'm going to do something I shouldn't know how to do at this point in the game if I was really playing this for the first time. I'm, I'm going to bypass some bullshit. We'll come back to it later. And by bullshit, I mean something you do need to do in the game, a place that you do need to visit. But uh, the way you get in and out of it is strange. Strange to say the least. And as you know now... Uh, there are certain places that where if you leave, you go get warped right back to the beginning of the fucking game. So, uh, the place, one of the places we need to go is one such place, and I currently do not want to go to back to the start. Does that make sense? Am I making sense when I'm when I'm saying explaining all this stuff? It'll make sense later if not. So what I'm gonna do here to avoid some headache is hang all the way right. Merciful, easy fight. How much XP do we need for our next level? Because that is a stat they track. 149, we need 198, so that's what, like... I forgot how to count. F 50, 59, 49, 49 experience points. All the way right, as I said. Just so we don't risk... ...getting warped away to a place we don't want to be right now. Game's even being merciful, not throwing a lot of random counters at us. When we're not in the trees... Uh, Left Davidson says, I missed the start, what'd I miss? A lot of grinding. And also us getting, like, some of our early objectives. Alright. This is the underground lair we're in now. I may have made a miscalculation. No, okay, no, they do have a... They are merciful in that they give us this path here. For now. I think I need to get to level 4 while I'm in here, though. 
because that will start to unlock some of the, uh... Some of the, the, the game-breaking, game-making stuff. The things that make this game interesting are about to start kicking in. If I could just beat this flack, if I could just beat this basic enemy... There we go. Alright, so this is our first dungeon. Nice dungeon music, right? We really went all out with the soundtrack for this boy outing. Oh, for fuck's sake. These, these whiffs have gotta stop. The game has to throw me a bone at some point. Oh my god! <laughs> At least it's not a returner who's, like, decimating us in two or three hits. There we go. These fights are about to get a little bit easier, at the very least. If I can circumnavigate all this bullshit, and I am now realizing that this is potentially a dead end... This is why we need to be level four, by the way. In the meantime, can I break these? Can Minami use break on these before they're level 4? We're gonna find out. Like using cut and Pokemon. Let's go to the ESP menu, break. Oh, that's really convenient, actually. Now, this is less convenient, having to get into a fight right away after that. But it goes to show, yeah, you can manipulate the environment to some extent. There, there are certain things we can break to get out of the way. Uh, ultimately, doesn't matter, because uh, we're about to get something that trumps that tenfold. That, that makes that, like, basically like a useless skill that we just used. I realize I am building this up a lot, but it is only because it is absolutely wild, the power that another puts in your hands at a certain point here. ESP, break. So we can get to this dead end. I didn't even get to make it to the dead end before we get another random encounter. That's awesome. Oy vey. So how's everyone been? How's the wife? How's the kids? How's everyone doing in chat right now? Feel free to ask questions. Ask me any questions, not about this game, about anything, and I will uh, do my best to answer while we are this murder in time right now. Still no level up. Can I break this? Nobody's there. Let, let me try this. ESP, break. ESP, break. No. Yeah, so you really can't, like, progress. You can't do anything until you're level 4 in this game, really. Well, hopefully this fight will get us there. I don't remember, I haven't been keeping perfect track of how much XP we have. Uh, DHB Sen- uh, DHB- C <laughs> DHC Ben, feeling like Rebecca Black on a Friday. Glad to hear it. How do I even exist? Says I have to get up at 5.30 a.m. for a telecon, so I'm very glad to be off of work. I went hiking today. Uh, I, for, uh, for work. I went hiking for two and a half hours in a nature preserve, and, uh, boy howdy, are my legs tired. But I saw some deer, and, you know, it was... It's probably good for you to walk. Probably not bad, right? I think doctors might even recommend it at a certain point. We really need to be, like, level 4, like, right now. Uh, oh my god, I'm so glad my work doesn't require hiking. Well, to be clear, I work with, uh, I do social work. I have a, a client who likes to hike, and they asked that I would a accompany them on said hike today, which I, uh, agreed to for some reason, despite having a bum leg, so. Oh my god, how much more XP do we need? Uh, <laughs> oh, we're so close. 
So nine more points. And 260 gold. So when we get back to the village... Boy, howdy. We'll be, uh, we'll really be cooking with, with gas. Oh, no! Oh, no! Do I have any psychic points? The run is now very much in danger. Oh! Uh, <laughs> so what happened there was I didn't have enough psychic power to do that attack. So then we got immediately uh, demolished after whiffing. <laughs> this is a present from oh, me Oh, jeez. Jeez, Louise. Thank you, Ben, for gifting a subscription. And Gator got it. Howdy, Gator. I see you hiding over there as a Gators want to do. 32. Oh, my God. Okay. We may be cheating in a minute here, by the way. We, we may very well be cheating soon. 16. At least we'll level up after this for sure. But then we gotta, like, run away immediately because... Alright, we have, like, 50-something health, as indicated by the five. Oh, fuck off! Really? You're gonna make me do all that, then you're just gonna run away so I don't get anything for it? Alright, fuck it, we're cheating. You're not running away. You're not getting off the hook that easily. I know I was wanting to not fight you, but... As long as you are taking away, like, 40 of... Like, however many hundreds of points of health, you are gonna die, and you're gonna give me some damn points. No! Come on! Is there any way... Is there any way I can get the experience points from this? What if I protect this turn? This is so dangerous. <laughs> okay, now, so obviously, let, let, I would rather uh, him retreat than have to restart the entire fucking game over. Yeah, 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 great. Oy vey! This fight will not level us up. Or will it? I don't think this guy gives us 9 XP. That's how much we need. If you have a clear idea of how much we have now. Uh, how do I even exist as, oh, is it back to square one when you die? Yes! Unless you uh, copy down your, your password. Which, uh, funny thing about the password, it doesn't track your gold, how much money you have, uh, beyond the number 255 because of bit value integer stuff. Uh, so if you had like 3,000 gold, you're poor the next time you load the game. And there are things that cost like 5,000 gold, right? So... So yeah, not ideal to lose that much money and have to grind just to get that money back. Three. One more fight. Oh, we're so close I can taste it. Watch it be another returner, though. Watch it be another returner that shows up and just fucks her shit up. I'm running around in circles. God, when I want to fight, I can't find anyone. When I want to live, when I just want to live my damn life, I come out the woodwork. I want to hang around up here, though. I don't want to linger too long in this place. Okay, good. Not doing any damage. Not so good. Two. Huh? Well, okay, so this is obviously some untranslated text. They must have done, like, a status effect on me. Oh, no. Uh, they made me... They, I think they cast Faint on me. Which means I can't do anything. This would be a great time to know, like, exactly what the game is saying right now, so I could see how I died there. Uh, we're, we're not gonna let that happen. Christ almighty, this game really doesn't want me to, to progress 
They, they are really throwing all the stops out. Do I have enough strength for a Psychic Ball just to... Good. Yeah, we're taking the cheats out nice and early on this one. I could cheat even more. I will cheat more in time, but for now, we are level 4, and this changes everything. Oh, fuck off. No, no, that didn't happen. There we go. Alright, so I'd like to get the other side of that. Very cool. Oh, this is an old power generator. Interesting. Yeah, we'll flip that switch. Yeah, why not? What's the worst that could happen? Oh, that's a lot of water there. Uh, I don't think our guy can swim. Oh, we, luckily we can walk on water, though. So we'll, let's do that. Oh, hey, it's another teammate. Thanks for your help. My name is Sheba. Please take me along. Welcome, Sheba, to the party. Let me go ahead and get his graphics uh, faded in on the little card on the right there. He is level zero to start with, so uh, that is accurate. So some of you may be wondering, uh, hey Cass, how'd you start walking through walls? Well, the answer is that when I hit level four, I gained an ability called Jump for Minami. Jump is an ability, it's a school of ESP power that allows you to jump over walls or to teleport. So, uh, in-game, that translates as being able to set teleport destinations, locations, go to and from, and also to walk through walls. Shiba is actually the, the king of jump in this game. We can actually switch to him on the overworld and, uh, have even more efficient jumping at a certain point. So actually we'll do that pretty shortly. Right now Shiba is not carrying their weight in this whole, like, combat thing. At least they're, they're taking occasional hits for us. And that'll be Shiba's first level. Which I think unlocks his ability to escape as well. So that's his first ESP. We're not going to be using his ESP much. As it turns out. Alright, let's switch to Shiba. Yep, he can jump through walls straight away. Now, there's a couple things I want to do before we leave this horrid place. Oh, by the way, this order thing... The manual says that, you know, like, having your characters appear in different order can make a great deal of difference in combat. No. It really doesn't. It's not like you're alternating turns with the enemy this whole time. It's just your team does their attacks in order, the enemy does their attacks in order. I guess, like, the advantage would be, like, if you're using, like, Misa first, so you can, like, scan the enemies, figure out what their weaknesses are, or, like, how much health they have, so you can, like, sort of target your attacks in that way. Oh, another fun fact about Shiba. Uh, he starts with zero gold, so he only has 18 gold. Whereas, uh, Minami here has 296 gold. We'll gain gold at the same rate. Uh, like, when enemy drops eight gold, they both get eight gold, so it's like a duplication thing. But, uh, for starters, nada, zip. There we go. 100 gold for... for Shiba. And 200 gold more for Shiba. Auspicious! Almost like that takes care of her problems. And a silver ID card. Yes, I will pick that up, thank you very much. Yes, it was completely invisible on the map. Funny you should ask. So yeah, uh, from here on out, uh, yeah, we're just gonna jump over everything, all the time. We're just gonna walk through, like, every wall, constantly, because it's intentional. That's what they wanted you to do. And they will come up with walls you can't jump over. The whole key card system that you're seeing, the, the ID system, is because there are certain places where the jump will not come in handy. Where you will have to use ID cards to go through doors, which has its own fun little series of quirks. More on that shortly. For now, let's get the fuck out of here. Any exit will do, I think. Ah, but for now, we're, we're getting experience, right? Alright, Minami whiffed. Shiba, your turn.
Uh, two and one. Uh, Video Game King says, Sheep is spellless seems more defensively focused. Maybe the idea was to make you consider whether to play it safe and get your buffs up first, or to rush in and attack the enemy. Yeah, it'd be great if we had those abilities. Uh, but remember, we unlock those over time. Right now, we can escape from fights, which I actually did not want to do. Uh, but because I committed to it. I can only teleport one person out at a time, by the way. So let, let's see what happens if we, uh, if Sheba hits the fucking bricks. So now Sheba's not at risk of dying. But I also think, don't think they get the XP for this. But yeah, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. And now he's back immediately. Now, now we're together again. Let's get the fuck out of here. Oh! Well, this isn't where I want to be. Let's try that again. Yeah, that's absolutely the door we came in through, right? And, yeah, there we go. That's how doors work, by the way. You just keep walking through them, and eventually they take you to a different place completely. Now, okay, this is the area before, and I really don't want to be here right now. Because my health is so low, I would like to go back to the village and uh, recover. But, uh, here's the thing. Almost all of that forest can enter you into this dungeon here. Any random tile will pop you out over here. Into this. As long as we're here, we might as well fucking uh, do the thing. Fuck the three tiles at a time, who cares? Peanuts. I, I will happily take those. In fact, let's take a few for the road. Because we're not going to come back here. Ideally. Let's get the five. Uh, how do I even exist, ass? This is the first non-Euclidean game. Might very well be. Fuck that, just walk through that. And what do we have here? An Ikunut. Ooh, I should take a few of those, too. Does anyone remember the potion spell? The, the potion mixture? The, the com combination of nuts that will give us uh, the the uh, the vaccine. The AIM potion that will uh, that'll cure the Deus Village. If not, I'll go check it. In fact, I have a feeling I'm going to have to go check it. Because I'm supposedly the expert on this game. And you know, I don't feel like being in this dungeon anymore. I picked something up there. I want to rewind because I want to hear that. To make sure I'm not... Okay. Let's take a look at our items. Blue ID card. We picked up a silver ID card. It became a blue ID card in our inventory. Because again, all the ID cards are improperly labeled. You hear that? It's another invisible item. We don't have any say whether we pick it up or not. Does not appear to be a nut. I don't know what that is then. Oh, it gives it gave us a free potion. Uh, I have to consult the list of potions to see what this is. Item five. This is a revival potion. I don't actually want to use it. So luckily, mercifully, B lets us back out of that. Oh no, they suddenly appeared. That is the risk I run. There's actually a mission critical item that is invisible on the ground in one of these places. I'll make sure to point that one out when we get there. But uh, I want to leave this dungeon, so I'm just going to walk through the wall. Oh, convenient, we're back here now. Funny how uh, that all came together, isn't it? Am I level 2 yet? No. It's just as well. Uh, since we're in village, I might as well speak to this man, mix some potions for only 15 gold. Well, boy, howdy, that's a bargain. Uh. Oh, wait, we don't have the nut I need. We need to go back to Deus to get the nut that cures Deus. Well, what can we make here, anyway? Uh, with Ruku Eku Yui... We can make item number 9, which gives us 100 uh, health points if we need them. So that could be handy to have. Is there anything else? 
Eh, no, not not really. I mean, the revive potions might be somewhat useful, but uh, we don't have the ingredients for that regardless. So we'll cancel out of that, we'll go do some healing, and then we'll be uh, on our way. I get an extra nut while we're here, though. Yes, I will happily take that. And now this lady blocks the doorway, it's not that big a problem anymore, because now we can just walk through the walls. It's cool that we have to manually heal each of our party members. Like, no, Sheba doesn't deserve the healing right now. Sheba's gonna have to rough it. Minami, that's my boy. Minami gets all the heals he could ever want. And we're still gonna get into some fights on the way there. No damage, huh? At least Minami has HP face. Oh, I forgot to buy weapons and armor. We can absolutely do that at this point. Jeez Louise. I just really got did in by a junk. Most basic ass enemy in the game. Just based on bad RNG. We're gonna be here for a minute, huh? Oh, thank god. Okay. We want to head north. <laughs> Come on! Brutal. Uh, Kajardan said, I remember hearing a bit about the how the damage calculations work. I have to assume you intentionally avoided weapons. I... There is conjecture. There are some weapons that you can buy that do worse damage than the weapons you have. And there's some speculation that... You, that the game doesn't know what defense is, that doesn't acknowledge defense as a value until you start buying armor. But ultimately, there are things you want to buy. There are weapons you want to invest in and armors you want to get. Sure, run away. Why not? Prive me of that XP that I actually really use right now. Oh, great! Someone earlier said that the, uh, the encounter rates in this are brutal, and yep. Wait, what the fuck am I doing? I'm, I'm going back to my village in a bit. Oh, we have Fire Arrow. Probably should have, uh, checked to see if we had that when we hit level four. Yeah, really fuck this guy up. We'll be restoring our PP soon enough, though. Walk on water over here. I can't catch a break. That's as much of a break as I'm gonna get, huh? Someone leveled up. Who was it? It's Shiba! Maybe they have warp now. Uh, let me just double check that warp. I, I put these names on the side of the screen because the the way they're named in game doesn't make any sense. Oh yeah, so the the warp there is a in the manual. It's called bad teleport, which has a chance to remove an enemy from battle. You don't get any XP or gold for it, but if there's like a returner, we can potentially warp them out and not have to deal with them, which is nice. All right, so now that we have jump, let's go. Outside the wall here. And yes, to figure this out, without the benefit of like a strategy guide or something, to have to walk around in circles trying to find this elusive nut. I guess you just have to assume from like looking out the. looking over the wall and being like, there's bushes over there, then figuring out that you can jump over walls, and then putting the pieces together that like, what. I wonder if these bushes, of these trees potentially would have the nut I'm looking for. So it's not impossible to figure that out. It's just really mean. Let's see what this man has to say. You'll need the aim potion to eradicate the disease. Yeah, we already know, buddy. Anything for me here? No. Let's go talk to that lady. Or uh, whoever it was that rescued Minami as a child. Let's see if they have anything to say to Shiba. 
you were young, I brought you here. They brought Sheba here too? Or they does not know how to, uh... You should meet- oh, there is new dialogue. You should meet Konol Katsuma in Ark City. Now that is helpful advice. And now we're going to leave your disease-ridden village. And go back here. And this time I'm not going to forget to get some, uh, some... Let's get the weapons first. Because the amount of HP we'll have at a certain point is ridiculous. So I think it's important that we get the Rag Launcher. Alright, so now... We have a Rag Launcher. Or is this called here? Lagranja. Because again, all these names of all the weapons and armor and items in the game, all misaligned, all fucked up. In this King Mike translation. Now, of course, I need to switch to Minami. To buy the Rag Launcher for him. And this should hopefully make more of our attack land. Take a little bit of the pain out of combat. Do we have any gold left over? 47. That's not enough for anything. Except to mix the potion that we gotta mix. Which is something. Alright, let's mix a potion for only 15 gold. A. Ruku. Eku. And that text there, uh, which is broken in this translation. Again, love this translation. Uh, it should say something to the effect of we've created the aim potion that we need. Replenish our Ruku nut, why don't we? And we'll do one more heal for the road, then we're going back to Deus, and then we are leaving this stinking fucking town. And we are progressing the game. We are moving on to greener or redder pastures, really. And there we go. Can't walk across that much water. Uh, Silberdorf asks, you got a rag launcher in the disease-ridden town? No, I got the rag launcher in our, our hometown in Mouse or Mammus. Yeah. But we're going back to Deus to actually use the potion to cure everyone there. Uh, Chaser, I think, is a tougher one. I don't know if they're Fire Arrow tough or Psychic Hurricane tough. We'll do Psychic Hurricane. I'll give it two. Two doses to kill this Chaser. We'll focus all our attacks on them. Five damage. That's right, I have weapons now. So I actually don't need to use ESP to, like, for the tougher enemies. I can actually just land a hit and potentially do some serious damage. There we go. This is going to make life a lot easier. Wait, is Shiba level 2 or level 3? Okay, cool. I could have probably checked how much XP I needed to get to level 3, but... Alright, so we've walked into town, and believe it or not, we've healed everyone already. It recognized that we had... Oh, wait, no, hold on. I think if we talk to someone, it'll uh, automatically use item number 6. Let's talk to this old guy and let's see if his dialogue is different. Don't run away from me. You'll have to follow the recipe to create the aim potion. Hey, Ruku Eku, I'm way ahead of you, old timer. What about you, girl? You saved my life! We still have the potion. We've called this everlasting disease the skin rinse disease. So, funny thing. When I use the potion, everyone's sick again. I need to just have the potion in my inventory at all times from here on out for everyone in this village to be okay. Because this is a competently programmed product, I tell you what. You should meet Colonel, yeah. It's good advice, as it was back then. I don't even know why I'm bothering to talk to these rubes. You'll need an ID card to enter the embassy in Ark City. That is true. I, I can confirm that. 
Then what about the coffin fit girl? Does she have anything? Any words of thanks, appreciation? It seems the Psychic's allies are gathering in the research lab. News to me. I didn't get that memo. Alright, we start back here. And I... Let's heal one more time, because we're about to embark on a, a truly dangerous mission. We're gonna advance the game somewhat. See, it, it all comes out, like, at once. Like, we, we spend the first hour and a... Like, hour of the game grinding away, and then out of nowhere, we're, like, really moving along. This game, by the way, very linear. Ultimately. Like, there's a very clear path that you follow of, of critical stuff to do in this game. And all told, like, the world is very small. It's just that there's some things they do along the way. Anyway, we can do this. To not have to walk around the entire circumference of the island to get to this place here. Uh, Fantasy Star would release... Uh, Fantasy Star 1 would release a couple months after this to put this game in context as Video Game King. Same year as... I, I like saying this is the same year as Final uh, Fantasy and Dragon Quest. I think that definitely does some contextualizing. You know, yeah, Fantasy Star, that works too. Let's hope we don't... Well, I'm fine with a random battle. I just don't want to accidentally warp into the uh, that one dungeon we were at where we got the nuts before. Because we uh, don't need to go back there. I'm hoping that if I cut through here, it won't count as warping me to the forest. Or to the place in the forest. Yeah, it looks like we made it. Okay, cool. So now we're going back to where we found Sheba. And, uh, do I have to? Well, first of all, let me see here. Anything here? And are we... Oh, just a really hard fight, huh? Yeah, I guess that's what I get. Well, we have weapons now, so this should be... At least a little less painful. He won't have as much time to do as much damage to me. Yeah, 20 I can live with. It's not 60. Okay, yeah, so now we get some XP. Uh, enjoy me being able to kill enemies while it lasts. Anyway, this that's just a pointless island. Salamander suddenly appeared. God forbid. Let's see if we have to go through the dungeon again, or if I can just jump over the walls here. No, we gotta jump over it. They, they made it. You have to jump over it. But... I can just do that. Walk into the same door we walked out of, because they don't know how to track doors here, and which ones are supposed to lead to where. Alright, so I want to show something here. This jump uh, destination, we can... If we're on the overworld, we can warp back to Mammoth Village at any time. If we're not in a town, we can warp back to Mammoth Village, courtesy of Sheba's jump. Which is handy. There's two other slots we'll have to unlock as Sheba levels up, which will allow us to teleport to other destinations. That we will visit a town later and we want to be able to quickly warp to it, uh, it'll give us that option. But he has to level up first to unlock those slots. And here's the thing. You can't warp from one town to another. If you're in a town, you can only set it as a warp point. You can only overwrite your slots. You cannot... Repeat, cannot warp out of a town. So this will become an issue later, potentially. There's gonna come a point where this game is, uh... Becomes Softlock City. Can I not jump over that? Oh, I, I know what I gotta do here. It's, it's all coming back to me. No. Huh. Uh, Video Game King says, Those red tiles up north are corrupted, aren't they? No. No, this is this is conscious design. They, they they set out to do something here. Is something that looks good? No. I don't have a follow up to that. I don't I don't have a you know justification or anything for it. Who 
leveled up? Probably Shiba. Yeah. Cool. I don't know if that gives us... I think that gives us warp. I'm going to assume we have warp. I'm going to make it white on me. List of stuff that we have. All right, so we can jump over that. Oh, by the way, you can't get into random encounters while you're jumping. Which is good. You don't want to get into random encounters while you're traversing through scenery. There we go. Mysterious door in the water. Where could this take us? Oh, what do you know? It's a new area. With the same old enemies. So this is actually a detour of sorts. This is not the way we need to go. There's just an item I want to pick up here. Before we go where we need to go. If we can survive all these encounters... I'm not even going to check the ESP menu to see if Shiba has warp yet. Because I don't want to use warp. I want to get experience points for killing these guys. I don't want to warp them away and get nothing for it. Let's just keep going to the right. Eventually we'll get where I want to go. Easy. There's a door. And let's see who waits within. Old man! Ark City is a very dangerous place. You should take this silver card with you. That's very helpful, actually. Oh, it actually registers it as a silver card here. So I guess the blue card we picked up actually is a blue card, or... I can't remember how, in which ways, this screen is fucked up. Because it is fucked up. Now I seem to remember if there's anything over here at all. Or if this is literally just a trap. If I continue to go in this direction. Because I know the way to progress. thinking about this. Will I... Am I able to recognize things in this? I think this is all just gonna be a dead end. Which is very mean of the game. If so. And is gonna make this stream even more unwatchable for the next five or ten minutes as we inevitably have to walk all the way fucking back. for any messages. Wait, where is this? It actually does look like something. Mm -hmm. The mystery deepens. Oh yeah, there's totally a door here. Where does this take us? Oh, this does take us where we want to go. Unfortunately, it means that we have the next level of enemies. Okay, so we're in Ark City now. This is the next overworldy area place in the game. So there's new enemies to face and new music to listen to. And, uh... And one problem. Our regular attacks no longer work. And also, these guys are very strong. So yeah, the game is suddenly a lot harder. We're gonna have to rely on our ESP, which, as you all know, is a very limited resource. Let's get rid of this fucking 
other guy. It did not work. We are still getting hits. Oh boy. Let's use the rest of our psychic points on this. No damage! I think our attacks can occasionally hit. And, you know, we don't really have any other choice. I guess our other choice would be to teleport out of this fight. Let's try bad teleporting the second one. It missed, because I accidentally pressed right on the D-pad, which put it to a slot that doesn't exist. So, I just completely whiffed that. I completely whiffed our only chance of possibly surviving this. And now Minami is paralyzed. Which means it's up to Shiba. Who can't do any damage. And does not have the psychic points to teleport either of us out of here. So, I'm not going to continue down this darkened path here. You get the point I'm making here, right? You, you see what's happening? You, you all understand, like, this is impossible. That I put myself in an, a literally unwinnable situation here. We, we all understand and recognize this. We all understand and recognize that I would be fucking miserable to watch this. If I continue to just bat away at this guy doing absolutely no damage. <sighs> okay. Let's see if there's any fun nuts I can collect here. Alright, run enemy. I think I can handle one enemy. And there's a lot of XP for doing this. If we do potentially manage to do enough damage to kill them. Eight damage. Let's see if an attack lands. 20 damage. This is where I use Psychic Ball. No damage. Alright, I can see I'm not wanted here in this part of the game. So this is the part where, uh, theoretically, if you wanted to play this game on its own terms, if you wanted to engage with this game the way it's meant to be engaged, we would have another several hours of grinding ahead of us. We'd want to be at least level 10. We would want to have enough psychic points that we can actually survive fights, but the only way to get those points would be to grind in this area, in the first area of the game. I'm not gonna make you watch me grind. At least not a lot. Here's what I'm going to do. And this is filthy, rotten, dirty cheating. But boy howdy, there's a game that calls for it. I've created some cheats. Shiba and Minami are now going to level up after every fight. We will give ourselves a few levels. This is like if we were to grind for, I don't know, six, seven hours. Because the enemies in this area do not give a ton of XP, as, as you'll recall. And we need XP in, in measures of thousands. And so... Enemies dropping 3 XP here, 6 XP there, ain't gonna cut it. There we go. Uh, Minami is now level 5. Shiba is now level 4. We probably have more abilities too. And obviously we're losing out on gold, but uh, I have another solution for that later down the line. Hopefully people aren't too mad about this. Just, if you want to pretend that I did grind it for six or seven hours off stream, by all means, parse this as it, however you want to parse it. I, I, I see this as saving you guys time. 
It's me trying to take mercy on you. Alright, guess what? That's another level up. Funny how this is, uh, this is going so much faster now. This is so much more convenient. Nami, Shiba, attack! I'll check what psychic abilities each of them have the next time we get more than one enemy at a time. Alright, so that's level 7 and level 6, respectively, if not mistaken. Let me just double check that. If, if Shiba's level 6, then my math is correct. Very good. How about we get them to uh, level 9 and 8, respectively? And then I will turn the cheat off. And we will not level up for a while. So for those of you curious how I accomplished this cheat, uh, what I did is there is a specific value for experience points needed for next level up. Which is not a measurement of how far away you are in terms of XP. It is literally every time you level up, it resets your amount of experience back to zero, and then sets a new goal for you. So if you just set that goal to be one, then every time you get any amount of XP, you level up. So that is the most efficient way I could think of to expedite the process of leveling, short of doing a cheat that sets everyone to level 30, which is the maximum level on this, by the way. And I want to turn this cheat off mid-fights. If memory serves. Apply those changes. So I think right now, we should still be at only needing one experience point to do this level. So both of them will level up after this. Alright, now if I go back... There we go. So now you see... That to level up Sheba from level 8 to level 9, if we wanted to do it legit, would require 1,878 XP. Enemies here, as a reminder, are dropping 3 to 9 XP per enemy. Aren't you so glad that I cheat so egregiously? Okay. Now we need to heal because we don't have full health or full psychic points, despite those level ups. So let's go back, why don't we? To our favorite character in the game, Little Miss Healer. Yes, I've heard your story. There's also another good reason to be in a village. Now, you saw the circuitous route we took to get to Ark City, as I called it out before. There's actually a bit of a shortcut here. Also, I don't think we've been to this side of the town before. I don't think I've used the jump to, uh, across that river. Let's see what this guy has to say. If the four people are not coming back, it might be dangerous. Everybody must come back. If you say so, old man. Let's check out this side of town. Let's see what's on the, uh, the grass is truly greener on the other side. Oh, what's this? Oh, a door in our hometown that leads directly to Ark City? A door in our hidden village? Our village that's supposed to exist to protect this psychic child and keep him completely, like, free of harm and, and danger? This leads directly to Ark City, the place that is actively hunting? Cool, it's actually really convenient. All right, so we are in Ark City again. To our west, I could pick up some uh, nuts, but uh, to our south is where I want to go because it is uh, where the game progresses. There's going to be two towns, two cities, uh, two districts, the government area and the residential area. There's also a, a space tower. That comes later. In the meantime, let's see what we got. Arrow, we have teleport, which is to individually escort people out of the uh, out of the fight. Then we have psychic fire. 
Uh, let's try Psychic Fire out. And that's how much uh, Psychic uh, Power we have, which is to say, a lot. Uh, we, we can burn through it real quick using Psychic Fire, but i like to see what it can do. Two damage. Glad I did that. All right, and Sheba has abilities up to cast illnesses I have written down here. I, I believe the names here are incorrect uh, in the game, and it's part of this translation. Yeah, so the way these should read uh, in the original Japanese, or a, if a functional translation were to exist, it should read teleport, bad teleport, Bad air, which is a suffocating status, which I have written, I've ever written as cast faint on the sidebar there. Psychic shaker is actually shield, which gives us extra shield. It gives us extra defense. So I have written down a shield on the screen. Then the fifth thing is called bad hit, which casts the illness effect. They have written here is psychic hurricane. So if you were to play this game and just play this translation, take it at face value, that this is the best translation that currently exists, which it is, unfortunately. None of these things correspond in any way, shape, or form. All these psychic things. But, uh, I do want to see Bad Air. This is, uh, this is one of our attacks. This is, this is Sheba's contribution to the party. So, what this thing... Uh, fails to display, because again, translation, is that robot enemies can't be suffocated. Bad air is supposed to remove their air supplies so they faint. Doesn't work on a robot. Sheba is useless. Psychic Hurricane sounds like it might be correct enough, says Kajardin. No. Uh, Psychic Hurricane is an attack that uh, Minami here happens to have. So, this does actual damage. Four damage, as a matter of fact. All right, we'll try fighting, even though it's just gonna whiff, right? Yeah. At least he's not doing too much damage. Okay, I want to try fire arrow now. Let's see how much damage each of these do as as two at their second ranking. Just to see how doable these fights are at the level that we're at. Which reminds you, this remind you, this would be like the equivalent of like I said six to seven hours of grinding. It's probably way more than that. I was probably, like, severely lowballing that. This could be tens, if not dozens of hours of grinding. All to not be able to kill a single fucking enemy. Because you're gonna run out of psychic points before this fight is over. Yeah, fuck it, just give it everything we got. 16 damage, there we go. And how much experience points would you get for that if you came all the way out here? Oh, 20! So those in favor of me doing some more cheating, uh, actually, you know what? Let, let's go ahead and, and create a poll. All right. Uh, I will cast this vote for one minute. All right, so if people want to vote, uh, there is now a poll up. Should Cast cheat even more egregiously? And your answers are yes, yes, and maybe. I wanted to give a choice in the matter. I'm seeing some votes for yes. There's one vote for maybe. There's one vote for each of the yeses. Well, you know, I'm going to call this one early, and I'm going to say that it's okay for me to cheat some more at this. Because we don't want to be here all fucking night. Hey, Minami, you're rich now. Shiba, so are you. And level up after every fight. <sighs> oh, I did not mean the menu in that way. I think we are okay. All right. Uh, should cast cheat even more greasy? Final results are in. Yes, yes. Very good. It still won't help us with this because we have no experience point or no no psychic, whatever. 
So... Let's try warping out of this. Uh... How do we wind up here? This is what happens if... This is the place you're supposed to go if you leave any of the cities in Arc City. I thought it would just take us back to the overworld. I don't know why it took us here. But it's just as well, because I can just... Uh... Oh, we have all three slots! That's actually perfect. Anyway, we're back to Mammoth Village. Let's do some healing. Actually, you know what? How about we get to level, like... How about we max out levels? Oh, let's not max out levels, because we still have other party members to get, and they're going to be so far behind. We'll have to do, like, 30 fights apiece for the both of them. Get them to where, uh... Minami and Shiba will be. Alright, so 10 and... I'm not even going to bother updating the graphic here until we are uh, satisfied with the amount of experience and levels we have. I'll show something I can do, too. Ah, eh, no, we'll, we'll save it. I think I remember where the village is. I think I'm doing circles around it. There we go. It's like I said, when you're looking for a fight, no one steps up to fight you. When you don't want to fight, when you absolutely do not want to engage, that is when everyone comes out of the woodworks to kill these poor children. Which you may have noticed, by the way. You see the graphics on the right-hand side, those graphics that I've pointed out? Have you noticed the character portraits in the actual fights? Have you noticed that they are slightly different than how they appear there? It'd be great if I could get into another fight to demonstrate what I have just said out loud. But alas... <laughs> Thank you. So, they've grown up. They're now teenagers. Levels correspond to age in this game. Is that not just absolutely wild? <laughs> and Final Fantasy does this too in the same year. Has the same idea about, uh... I don't think Psychic Arrow is actually Psychic Arrow. I don't think any of these are actually attacks. Oh, wait, no, that's right, we have uh, bad air. Let's, let's really suffocate this fucker. Now they're fainted, now they can't attack us, I think. Oh, they swooned, is the way they say it here. Let's look at, like, we charm them or something. Yeah, I was gonna say that, the, the class upgrades in Final Fantasy, where your character portraits change. In the original Final Fantasy, like, there's a point halfway through the game where all your characters uh, level up. And, uh, in, the, in their character portraits change in game. So this, this game had the same idea. Parallel thinking. Alright, what level are these two at now? 14 and 13. I'm still not satisfied. Let's get them halfway there. Let's get them to 15 and 14. Or 16 and 15. How's that? How's that sound? Cool. We'll level up. We'll get into another fight. We'll disable the cheats. Except the gold. Because I just want to have infinite gold. I don't want to think about money. Oh, I did not mean to walk into town. That's what happens when you have an invisible village. When you when you literally can't tell where home is. You, you will accidentally find it. You will accidentally walk into it. Any minute now. I'll get what I want. I cannot fucking believe 
how rude this game is to make you. Because <laughs> that's the other thing, like, imagine, like, you, you're legitimately trying to grind, like, in real time, and the amount of fights that are- wait, hold on. Before I forget this... There we go. Level up. There we go. 10,000 experience points! So imagine you're trying to legitimately grind in this game. And you're just not getting the fights you want. You're not getting any fights at all, as a matter of fact. There we go, let's update that graphic for him. And Shiba's not far behind at level 15. I'm going to assume that he probably has everything at this point as well. So there we go. Oh, I forgot, I'm too exhausted to do any uh, sort of spell. I don't have enough exp uh, points to. Oh, we don't have jump yet. But that's fine. What does this one correspond to? This cures illness. Yeah, so this is the only offensive thing we have, uh, as far as ESP, and it just makes him pass out. And just regular fight. Regular fight. Beautiful thing. Uh, Left Davidson says, A whole team of professionals spent probably the better part of a year sweating through their full business suits they wore at work trying to make this thing work, and we and we end up with this. Yes. God bless them, right? By God, they tried. And, you know, the result is, is legendary. Is the legendary shit game. Uh... Yeah, I mean, the fact that this thing has endured, the fact that it's, it's gone on to be re-released, I mean, there's something magical about that, isn't there? <laughs> I think there is, anyway. So, you know, it's like it's not like their, their efforts were in vain. In the fact that, you know, the story has been told. People are familiar with, with the game and, and the message and the moral. Uh, Leith Davidson, why do you think you move so slowly? Because they just didn't have a concept. I mean, this is the thing I, I, think, I think I touched on earlier. I'm going the wrong way. I need to go through the door again. Uh, uh, Lith Devinson says, Is there a reason, a technical one, a philosophical one, a spiteful one? I, it, it's it's just a matter of... They they didn't have references for this. Their references existed. There were other RPGs they could have played. But, I mean, this wasn't an era of player convenience. That wasn't, like, at the forefront of their minds. The forefront of their minds was getting the most value out of your game. And, and to a lot of developers, that meant playtime above all else, and, and manufacturing ways to extend playtime. Or it's not even thinking about, like, you know, players would have more fun, potentially, if they can move quicker. It would be more convenient for them if they move quicker. Right? It, just, it doesn't enter into the equation at a certain point. Alright, now we have a bit more uh, psychic strength to play with. Let's see what two of this will do. Ooh, 18 damage. I like that. I do like big numbers. Oh, even our regular attacks do two damage now. Handy. Uh, Left Evanson says this is long... I guess this is long before the idea of playtesting. Uh, playtesting existed back then. Uh, whether a company could afford it or not. Now that is the question. There we go. Now we could potentially win these fights. In relatively short order. And proceed to where we want to be. Which is, uh, due south, incidentally. Cleopatra? Ah, that's just a snake. I don't think that's Cleopatra, the goddess of snakes. I think that's just a singular snake. Let's do uh, our, our most powerful move. 12 damage at second rank. We, we still have to invest way more... Psychic points in order to, uh, you know, be actually effective in these fights. A uh, brand new Scooby said, I actually recall hearing news that there's evidence it was a one man team. Me and Rainy were looking into it. Uh, you know, it's credit to another, and another is a, a studio that had games before and after this. 
Uh, it, there's so much stuff that's unknown. If if I had continued, uh, if me and Rainy had been able to continue our work on this, uh, to write the article on this, which I, I might still write an article if I can dedicate it to Rainy at this point. Uh, for now, we're just doing the stream because it's uh, so much easier to do it this way. <laughs> To just talk while I do this. But if I were to do an article, I'd do the full amount of research. Oh my god, we can't take two steps here! <laughs> and we don't have any attacks that attack multiple people at once. Alright. I'm going to apologize to this hot lady on the left. Messiah, as she's called. 49 damage, that'll do ya. And Sheba, you're useless, so attack uselessly. Seven damage. Seven damage, which is nothing, because remember, when it says 883 health, that's actually 8,830 something health that we have. So seven damage compared to that. It don't amount to much. Of course, these guys do have attacks in their back pockets where they could potentially do, you know, dozens of points of damage all at once. Fights. Video Game King giving this game way too much credit. Messiah, Ark City produces an entire class of saviors, their entire existence dedicated to eradicating anything vaguely resembling hope for a better world. Yeah, I mean, there, there's probably some intentionality to the things they do. Uh, and in the way they name enemies and in everything they're doing here, but... Uh, Left Davidson says, In retrospect, the Final Fantasy 1 battle designer conceiving of combat as a players on a football field was so important. I never thought of how useful that must have been as, like, a unifying idea to design around. Yeah, not wrong. And we'll also walk through some walls, and let's visit this village. Jump. Set the second slot. And we can see where this is. This is the government district. We gotta be careful here. I haven't seen you before. How about you? What's up? They changed the data or something? This guy actually sells uh, advice. These are actually hints. Uh, unfortunately, uh, these aren't translated properly because, again, King Mike translation. Uh, but we have infinite gold, so let's see if these are... Okay. Looking for someone. Not gonna find them here. Very helpful. That would have cost 100 gold. What would 200 gold get us? Stay in the residential area if you're alone. That's, uh, something. What about 300? Thanks a lot. No matter what, we gotta see it. So, that's actually the only useful bit of advice. And it's not because it's useful advice. I mean, the advice is, is broken. Uh, but if I talk to this guy... I've heard it before. Seems you're not with those other psychics. They're the enemies of mankind. Out there in the outer world. I'll give you this. And what they give us... is a yellow ID card that we need at the end of the game. So if you didn't do that... <laughs> hey, you're fucked, buddy! Uh, brand new Scooby says, are you gonna do the fetch quest to get Misa? I will indeed. Uh, god, more of this untranslated Okay, this guy's supposed to say welcome to Ark City, or welcome to the Ark City government district, residential, whatever district we're in right now. Hey, need an ID? Now, this menu, again, completely broken, but this is one of the most essential shopkeepers in the game. You would very need, badly need to understand what each of these options say in order to progress this game. So when when I said that King Mike translated all just the essentials, I was wrong. Uh, so what these are supposed to read as, this first one is called the Welcome ID. This gets us entry to a room in the Space Tower that is completely useless. Except for, like, you know, flavor. The second one for a thousand gold is the Gold ID, which opens up a single empty room in a different area. And when I say empty room, I mean like an empty room. So just completely pointless key. 
This should be the silver ID. We need four of these. They cost 2,000 gold apiece. Thanks, we love your business. So let's buy a few. Yeah, that's the four we would theoretically need, but let's let's do extra because we have the space. And then finally, uh, wait on, that could have been the wrong ID. Oh, now we got to sit through this because again, wonderful, full-fledged, complete translation. Nobody's there. Alright, let's see what IDs I actually bought. They say silver, which would be ideal. Alright, so, okay, so the last one would have been the yellow ID for 3,000 gold, but we got one for effectively 300 by buying the advice from the one guy and getting it for free from the guy beneath him. So, we did okay there. Uh, Nebulous Bebulous says, How much of this game's development do we know of? Was it particularly troubled? Nothing. Uh, we, we, we'd know jack about this. Me and Rainy were looking into it. There was a couple issues of Login Magazine that uh, did some stories on Psychic City. I think one of them may have covered this game in some capacity. They may have had an interview with another or Hot B. But, uh, really not much at all. There, there is the, you know, the Claris disc, uh, or whoever uh, did the reissue, the City Connection reissue that has, like, a little bit of, like, information, like, product description stuff, but, like, not really much about, like, the actual developers. Uh, so, yeah, this, this is really largely mysterious. I, I, me and Rainy were really gonna, like, have to, like, bunker down to figure out our sources on this, to figure out what would, like, have the info, what would have the hot scoops. But, uh, as long as we're on this screen, I'm gonna go pick up an essential item in the game. Notice how we exited the village and it took us directly to here. Do I even have any... Uh, AJ Vark saying, I don't think we know as much as Death Crimson or E.T. just for comparison's sake. Meanwhile, Death Crimson was like, hey, we were all having a good time trying new things. Uh, we have a Death Crimson article up on the site. The most definitive Death Crimson article ever written on the Japanese or English web. And, uh, no, they were... and eh, no. I wouldn't say it was anything like we're having a good time here. I think it was... That was a very... That was a somewhat troubled development. They, they had to scrap a lot of features in that game that they originally had planned. And what they delivered put them in financial per peril. So they were really concerned about, like, being able to stay afloat. So I, I'd say the development of Death Crimson was a, a largely stressful prospect uh, for E. Cole. But it paid off because when uh, Beep... Uh, Saturn, Beep Sega Saturn, or Sega Saturn Magazine, however they branded it, I forget how they branded it. Once they picked it up and it became, like, a cult favorite, uh, fucking the president of E. Cole would, like, go into the subway and, and sell copies of the game, like, on the street, and people would recognize, like, they'd have, like, fan events like that, like, and that's how they managed to make the game profitable, off the, the negative word of mouth of being covered in, in Beep, uh, Magazine. It is what saved that company and allow them to move just enough units to keep afloat. You know, here's the thing. I don't want to do all these fucking fights. We're going to start cheating a little bit more. Now, I'm walking over here for a reason. Did you hear that beep? As we walked over that tile above us? That, that little beep. You don't see anything on this screen here, because this is the most fucking frustrating thing about this translation. We just picked up the oxygen pipe. Oh, it reminds me, I should probably be updating how many IDs we have on, on this screen here. And I'll update to say that we have one oxygen pipe as well. And save that. The oxygen pipe is an essential item in this game. Without it, you cannot beat this game. You cannot advance to the final, like, act of this game, the final location in this game without it. We picked it up. It is entirely invisible. And because of this translation that forgets to give it a value, that forgets to give it a name, 
It shows up as invisible in this inventory, but I assure you, we have an oxygen pipe in our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8th inventory slots. And with that, we can now jump to Mammoth's Village, heal up a little bit, and then uh, go back so we can go to the, uh, the other district in Ark City, the other town. So, you know, as far as, you know, solutions go, as far as, like, progression through a game, locking large swaths of the game behind an invisible item in a place you really don't want to get caught having to navigate, that's, that's pretty frustrating. I think there is an alternative. You can potentially buy an oxygen pipe. I can't remember if you can or not, because, again, the King Mike translation, and I, I hate to keep harping on this, you know, because on the one hand, this, there, this guy made an effort. He tried. He provides what is the only translation of this game currently available. But fuck me. It is so busted. It is so not where it needs to be. There needs to be another effort to translate this game, to make a functional translation of this game. And again, I hate to keep harping on this point too. That's what me and Rainy were working on. It's not gonna come to fruition now, now she's gone. And that's a, a fucking shame. And so, I, I, there's part of me that hopes, against all hope, against all odds, that by me streaming this, <laughs> that maybe some, some person watching will be like, some translator will catch this, and be like, alright, I'll fix this thing, I'll, I'll stop Cass's belly aching, by putting out the better translation of this. Uh, I don't think we need to use Psychic Final. I think Psychic Final is overkill. I think if we do do a more powerful Sonic Shaker, like a level 3 or level 4 Sonic Shaker, that'll probably get us through most fights. Oh my god, you know, fuck this. I, I've made the decision, we are not fighting on every fucking screen. Though this is a new enemy, so I'll go ahead and do this. Because they look kind of cool. It was the first time we're seeing an enemy, we'll, we'll show him off. Here, take some Psychic Shaker. Uh, AJ Vark says, there you go, two people you just gotta find someone who can hack the ROM. Okay, so you're finding people who can translate Japanese, that's, okay, that's not the problem. It, it's the ROM hacking that's the fucking problem. Like, I... <laughs> okay, look. I, in RetroArch, has an, an OCR function, okay? Look, I, I was playing the Japanese ROM of this. Let's go ahead and quick save, first of all. We'll come back to this fight in a minute, why don't we? Look, if you're just looking for someone, if you're just looking for like a way to like brute force your way through a game, there are ways to brute force your way through any game that's not translated. This is the Japanese ROM, we're not gonna be here super long. There's some Japanese text. Welcome to Mammoth's Village. If you stay here, you'll be fine. That is a function in RetroArch that is called the AI service. This is before AI was like a... became like a toxic word. Uh, it does an OCR, does an on-screen character recognition, sends it to a translation service, and feeds it back to you in-game. If you want to, this, this is how you can play the game this way. Great. And, and so that eliminates the need for a translation, like, like translators to help you with it, I guess. Like, so you, you can do that if you want. Uh, so that, that's one way. I could have done it that way. I, I could have potentially played the game this way. What's interesting, I'll also show something real quick, is that the uh, the menus are completely different in this version versus the uh, the English translation, because they have more room to work with in this version. So there, there's some, like, differences between these. We're going to go back to the, uh, what we were just playing. Look, it's, translation isn't the issue. It's great that the people can read Japanese and, and translate. Their, you, you can learn Japanese if you really want to play this game, right? You play it by yourself. The, the whole point is the ROM hacking. That's the tough part. I say this to someone who has tried multiple times to learn Japanese and just can't. I, I would love to, but, uh... I don't mean to get heated. It's just... It's just, it's just criminally bad to, to say, like, you know, there, we found two people who can translate. 
If that's great, am I gonna pay them out of pocket? I'm broke as shit, okay, for one thing. I, I would love to have the money to splash around to pay translators to translate an entire game for me. But, like, I don't have that kind of money. Sorry, I'm passionate about this shit. It was great when I had Raimi. It was great when I had my friend who I could talk to about this shit, right? And they had the ROM hacking. They put out so many cool, like, ROM hacks for, like, NES games. They were doing Atari 2600 stuff. They were capable. And they could, like, work on the translation stuff. So, it's like... But they're fucking dead now, so that's not happening. It's as simple as that. So, can I find someone else? Can I, can I sucker someone else into putting that much, like, work in? I, I keep fucking up and, like, losing where I am in this. This isn't actually Fire Ale, because I'm, I'm playing as- this is Sheba. So... I, I lost my place because I got frustrated. Let's kill this guy and get on with it. Get on with the game. Ah, Psychic Shaker. Your Gill defeated. We're moving on up in the world. Uh, CB San Juniac says this. Bear in mind, this is a ROM hat from 2008. Uh, that doesn't. Fuck this. We're not getting into every fight. Uh. It doesn't. <sighs> They, they've had so many more years to complete it and finish it, to finish the job they started, if that was something they were interested in doing. I don't know how many other translations King Mike did. And again, I'm not trying to be like... I, I was trying to say earlier that I'm not trying to like punch down on this this guy, because, again, this is something. It's something is better than nothing. But on the other hand, this is just like really not where it needs to be, to be like an effective way. For people to play this game. I mean, when, like, when the menus are literally, like, when you, when you're, all the attack names that Shiba has are literally, like, completely disconnected from what the actual attacks are, so you're just getting, like, completely wrong information, that's, that's rough. Right? Like, that, that is, like, unacceptably bad for this. So yeah, I mean, it's great. They, they did something that I, I couldn't do in King Mike. Like, I absolutely could not do this. My, my, my goal when working with Rainy was to, uh, you know, like, issue as much, like, moral support and to, like, parse through all the Japanese text names, to play the game in as many ways as possible, to get make sure, like, all the contextual stuff made sense. Uh, and then they were gonna do the actual ROM hacking, they were gonna- I was gonna help with the translation, just like doing Google Translate, which, you know, is not much, but then I was gonna like, you know, try to retranslate, recontextualize what that meant in the context of. Because she couldn't speak fluent Japanese either, for what it's worth. So she also was relying on a lot of stuff, but she was still able to put out like really comprehensive translations, like stuff like the manuals or like other games, so... It would have been better than this, what we're playing right now. This game where half the characters speak in complete gibberish. But, uh, we are now here in this district. And who is that character in red? Hello. I am I. Her name's actually Ain, but... You are a psychic just like me. A friend of mine was found and captured. I beg you, won't you lend me a hand? Oh, where'd she go? Oh, she's in my party. Well, how about that? We have a new friend. So everyone, everyone say hi to Ain. Uh, we're gonna level her up pretty quick. We're gonna we're gonna turn on uh, leveling up after every fight for her to get her into level parity with uh, everyone else. Level up Ain after every fight. Thank you. Because bear in mind, at this point in the game where you would legitimately need to have grinded for hundreds of hours, potentially, to get these two dweebs to level 16 and 15, respectively. What level does she start at? Fucking zero. That is criminally bad game balance. That is ridiculous. Obscene. She can't even walk through walls, she's pointless. Now, these are some shops here. This is the only other shop in the game. 
this is the only other place we're gonna find that sells... The only other town we're gonna find that sells weapons and armor. Now, I need to be very careful here as to which ones I buy. This is the armor shop. For the armor shop, I want this last one. I want this last armor. This, the name of this armor is supposed to be Last Battle. Which is supposed to indicate the fact that it gives you uh, the maximum amount of defense. An excellent fit. Alright, shit through his spiel. We'll buy Last Battle for you too. Oh, another fun thing! Let's pretend like we had armor before on these characters. Because I don't think I ever bothered to buy the armor for Minami and Shiba, because it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary right now, but I'm doing it anyway. Let's say we had this top one here selected. This is the Stabilizer Armor. It costs you 300 gold. You want to buy this new armor and uh, pass down the, the existing armor you had to another character. You can't do that. You can't transfer items between characters. What happens when you buy this new armor? The other armor gets destroyed. You don't sell it back. You don't get any money back for it. It just disappears. So, uh, you know... That's rough. And now, as long as we're here, let's also go ahead and buy ourselves some weapons. And again, complete gibberish. But here's the interesting thing. This weapon here is called Hellbrass. You can buy this in the shop back in Mammoth. It does five damage. This is Lagrangian, Lagrangian, which again, uh, we have the Rag Launcher. Oh wait, no, this, no this, this is the Rag Launcher again, but it's not translated here for some reason. Right, okay. This is the Gyroscope. This does 9 damage. And costs 420 gold. So you would think this one that costs 500 would be the best weapon in the game. This does 7 damage. So 2 points less than this weapon that costs 80 gold less. Needless to say, we will be buying the Gyroscope. So, you know, a, a, a better, a finer RPG, a superior RPG, would uh, show you, like, what the damage values on these weapons are, as opposed to having to make you do, like, trial and error to figure this stuff out. Okay. So, we can totally get that fourth party member now. We can, uh... Well, you may notice, in the graphic, I have Ain in the fourth slot. And Misa in the third slot. But you need to get Ain first to unlock Misa. There's no way you can get Misa without first getting Ain. Because it's Ain who tells you about the quest to get Misa. And yet, Ain occupies the fourth slot. So there's just a gap on the screens in combat and in menus where you have to select a character where Misa should be, but is not. If we speak to these guys... Okay, so actually, let's, two things. First of all, these doors here. Uh, let's see what key card this would potentially use. That would cost us a blue ID card. Right? Yeah? No, silver ID card. Cost a silver ID card. To read this gibberish. I'm sure he says like something like more like akin to a hint in the original game. So let's exit out of there now. Oh, it costs us another ID card. The ID cards are used every time you go through a door. So, let, let's just try something. This something crazy here. Two. Three. I now have no silver ID cards left. Move out of the way. I'm trying to prove a point here. Oh! Overshot. We can't go through that door anymore. We don't have the ID cards for it. We use them all. ID cards are like keys in any other game where they're expendable. 
Imagine if jump didn't exist in this game so where you can jump over walls. Well, first of all, you know, crazy thing, making you, like, have an ID card door here, right? When you can just jump over the walls, and you absolutely can by this point in the game, because there's no way to get to this point without having been able to jump over walls this whole time. So it's just a trap, having these doors here that eat up your ID cards. Just a mean fucking trick on the game's part. But, it gets worse. Yeah, no one's gonna have anything to say here. Again, if I was playing the Japanese ROM, I could at least do the on-screen text translation and we get, like, a vague idea as to what some of these people are saying. But ultimately, these characters are useless. No, no one here is particularly useful, except I think this guy and maybe the one in the top right corner. I'm Natasha, but who are you? We'll come back for you, Natasha. And let's see uh, what this guy with the cool sunglasses has to say. I'm sure it's going to be something exciting. Why do I even fucking bother? Okay. So now we need to leave town so we can use Jump to teleport back to a different village. We're going to unlock Misa. This requires a very roundabout sequence of events. Oh, right. I didn't... I need to select Shiba. Let's go to the Government District. You may be familiar with this spot. Uh, which door is it I want to go into? Can't walk through these walls, by the way. So, you know, just for the sake of example... Wait, hold on. What key does that even use? Huh. It used up all my keys, but it stayed open. I was trying to prove how you could softlock the game here by getting into a section that you can't jump out of, but instead I just ate up all my key cards, needlessly going through that door. I don't think any of these guys have anything interesting to say, by the way, so... Let's just continue to go this way. Do you have anything to say? Good afternoon, sir. Well, that has reaffirmed my faith in humanity right there. What about you, random robot? Yeah, never mind. It's we're, we're back to square one. Let's talk to this guy. Max is a great guy! I'll have to take his word for it. Alright. Now, the things I'm about to do here will seem very, uh, how you say, confusing. This nurse is supposed to say something the effect of, this is a hospital, because that is a nurse. We're going to use one silver key card to go through this door. You see this guy behind this wall? Remember that we can break things, playing as Minami. If you want to ask someone else, ask Mask, or ask Max. All right. We're going to use another key card now to get the fuck out of here. And get out of here we shall. We can jump over that mercifully. Now I want to ask Max. Maybe this, maybe this guy knows where Max is. How'd you hear Max's story? He's dead! Well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. We should let the other guy know that Max is dead. Round and around we go. Another silver ID card. We break the wall again. Break the walls down. I see. Max is dead. I might know the Natasha might know the whereabouts of the one you're looking for. And we use another silver ID. That's the empty room in the hospital that... You know, actually, I I almost wonder now. I almost want to come back here with the ID card that opens up that door specifically. Because that isn't a silver door. That's I think that's the one key that you can use... Uh, there, there's the one door you can use the, the gold ID on. 
So maybe you can break the walls above him. And that would be another way to... to get in contact with that guy. So you wouldn't need the silver IDs. You wouldn't need four silver IDs. You would just need two uh, gold IDs. But I still want to show something off. Just for the sake of... Documenting something that definitely, absolutely happened to players back in the day. Random nonsense. About what I expected. Can we break the walls down? Not these ones. These are these are real sturdy walls here. Well, let's jump out of here, right? Let's let's go back to Mammoth's Village. Oh, why didn't we jump? Oh, that's right, because you can't jump. You can't warp when you're inside a residential area. And this screen counts as a residential area. It counts as the hospital. So, without the ID card to get out, this would be a soft lock. This would be a game over. This would be you have ruined the hundreds of hours you have sunk into this game and put yourself in a position that is unescapable. This would be the end of your adventure. Luckily... We have the power of modern emulation. So that will not happen to us. But I just want to show, like, all the places this game could go horribly, horribly wrong. And, and that is certainly one of them. Now that said, I do want to... This is for my own edification right now. This should be the gold ID. Right, we need to fast forward this because this guy's text is completely broken. I think that probably addresses like the wrong value in memory for where his dialogue is supposed to be. And so it causes a tree that luckily you could escape from. Luckily it's not the end of the game when you get stuck in that loop. It eventually resolves itself by deciding that you're not talking to anyone at all. There's no one there in that position. Alright. This, this is strictly for my own curiosity. Break. 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 No, so this room is just completely useless. That's not another way you can talk to this guy. You can't speak to him through the walls. You can't telepathically communicate with him. So yeah, that, that key that literally just opens this door, and it's a soft lock. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, I only bought one of those keys. I just probably should have bought two. Anyway. So. Ignoring that. Ignoring the, the multitude of ways in which this game can fuck up and, and fuck you up. Let's do what we came here to do. And that is get our fourth and final party member. That's in the residential district. There's an area to the south here where we talk to Natasha. Is that Natasha? No, Natasha's in one of these down below. That might be Natasha? No. How about this away? people you're looking for are still locked in the secured area. You'll need the blue ID card to get in. Go see Eartha if you don't have one. Well, luckily, we actually do happen to have a single blue ID card. But, as we all know, that will only get us so far. It'll only get us through the door the first time, but lock it behind us. So yes, it does behoove us to get a free blue key card from... Uh, what's her name again? What's my age again, for that matter? I've heard from Natasha. You should take this ID card with you. Wunderbar. Alright, now, I forget. Is the screen I want to go to here? The south of this? Or is it back in... The government districts. 
It is back in the government district. Which means warping back here, jump. Government. And eastward bound. Something that, something that just occurred to me. You know, we, I've complained about the lack of, like, psychic points and how the amount of grinding you need to do and having to go back to the village every time to, like, restore your your mana, as it were. You know, that's what the crafting system ostensibly seeks to, to remedy to some extent, right? By creating those, those potions that restore your PP. I am Misa. Thank you very much for the help. I'll go with you. So this girl would have been invisible. We have not been able to see her in this cell prior to going through that whole roundabout quest that we just did. But with that said, we do have Misa now. Let's welcome her to the party. Hello, Misa. You are effectively useless, except for the fact that you can restore health. That much is useful. Really, the real prize winner here, the one who's really gonna, like, come in handy, that's Ain, because she actually has attacks. Some useful spells on her, on that girl, I tell you what. And since we've uh, brought another member into the party, let's go ahead and level them up after every fight. You know, at this point, we are so close to the end of the game now. And again, this is not a run indicative of the trials and tribulations an actual player back in the day would have to go through. We have done egregious cheating to get to this point. Imagine hundreds of hours behind this now. Just spent grinding on enemies who don't give nearly enough experience points. Oh, uh, how do I even exist, ass? I got sidetracked by all the soft locking. What was the actual logic of the max thing? Okay, I should explain what, what I assume this is like meant to be. Because, again, translation here, not the best. But what it's trying to convey is that there's like a resistance cell here, right? That there are members of the resistance. All these people who are selling you gear and stuff, they, these are people who have been oppressed by the City 3 computer, who are, you know, unwilling participants in this Arc City experiment. So they're looking for, like, someone to help out, but they need to vet you first. They know that... They don't know who the psychic children are. They know that... They know that Ain is... That Misa is captured. And they want to, like, have a trusted source that they can, like pass the information they have off to, to, to get the resistance. So basically what we're doing is we're just talking to people, we're networking, we're being like, hey, I'm legit. You know, you want to help me find this this Misa person? So it's basically a series of events that leads to you getting the location that she's at when you're a trusted member of the resistance. When you learn Max's name, for example, Max would be like a resistance fighter, or like a code word would potentially be like what he is, right? Like people when people say Max's name, that's how you know that you're a member of the resistance. So by getting to that one guy who was locked in the hospital behind the secret wall, by getting the code word from him, basically, that that's how you basically bought stock with everyone else. So I'm, I'm sure in the original Japanese, it makes more sense. Because if there's one thing that the original version of this game that, you know, you gotta give it to this game, it has lots of dialogue. I should also mention that, like, we, we can't really convey it here, but telepathy gives extra dialogue to every character in the game. Because you can read their minds. And granted, most people will just say, I feel like someone's trying to read my mind, right? Which is not particularly useful. I think if you try to use telepathy on the, the evil robots, it that's actually correct. They spit out random numbers and letters, as a robot would be wont to do, right? So that, that's cute. That makes a sort of sense. So there's a lot of dialogue in this game. There's a lot of text, which makes it that much harder to translate, obviously. It makes it that much more understandable why it's, uh... Uh, Tigerbug, I believe you are a, uh, a little late, uh, to the chat. Hello? You are mentioning that the ROM hacker Rainy Baker loved bad Famicom games. It was a game which you were particularly interested in. He's creating games inspired by it and creating variations on instruction manuals. Yes. I, I open up the stream by saying that, yes, I was working on her with that translation. Uh, that is why I'm playing it now. She would have guested on this stream if she was still here. She, she would have been my co-host on this. We would have gone through the game together on this stream. Uh, but uh, that obviously isn't happening now. Uh, but she was a friend of mine. And uh, this game was a passion project of hers. And so me playing it now is... Uh, is not only a celebration of its birthday, but... Uh, you know. <sighs> 
I don't mean to bring it down every time that her name comes up, but uh, you know, it, it's 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 hard not to, because uh, I'm I'm still kind of rocked by it. Truth be told, uh, let's get on with the game though. Let, let's try to chug a chug along. Now, there's a couple things we could do from this point. <laughs> This is a present from me Another to you. Another gift sub. Thank you very much for that, Ben. <laughs> Let's see where these doors take us. Where does this one take us in particular? I gotta remember. There's some labyrinth that's outside of Arc City, so we'd have to do, like, jump through a bunch of hoops. Literally jump through a bunch of shit. To, uh, get back to Arc City. But I'm mercifully... I'm fully aware of what I'm doing. Can you see? <laughs> <sighs> Drink up successful. I, I really could use that right now, so thank you. <laughs> I really don't want to get into these. Actually, you know what? We, I forgot. We need to level up. We need to level up these two dweebs. Uh, yeah, let's... I don't know why you need to pick the order for every fight. Ag again... A better game, a, a more sensible game, a game that had the benefit of, like, you know, a few more years of of, of exer observing the market, would have you select your party order from the main menu, or, if, like, from the in-game menu before the fights, and then when you go into fights, that, uh, that party order is automatically taken care of, right? That's how I would choose to do it. These new weapons should actually connect most of the time. So we can actually... Well, okay, never mind. Misa is still... What about you, Wayne? Can you hit for damage? One damage. Yeah, there's, their base stats are still so low that they're ultimately not doing much. Is Misa dead? God, I hope not. Well, that's not even that big a deal. We have a revive potion. Uh, that attack should have killed the Stalker, but it, if you notice, it attacked to the left. I think I fucked up because I tapped down again. And also, these aren't two San Juans. That, that's a shocker. But because I didn't tap down again, it actually attacked the right slot. So that's the thing you can do. You can accidentally attempt, uh, attack an empty slot. Which is not ideal. Uh... <laughs> And I keep forgetting that Shiba has dog shit ESP. You fight. You you get down in the, in the dirt and you scrap it out. Misa's not going to have anything yet as far as skills because she's technically level zero still, as is Ain. Oh man, they went right for Misa. They, they really don't want her doing anything. Well, we're going to have to revive her when we get back to... Mammoths. That'll end this fight. Well, that'll level Ain up. Tell you what. Let's jump back to Mammoth's village. Let's go ahead and revive Misa. We, we are gonna need her. Not really. It's entirely possible to skip. Uh, you know having them in your party. If you don't want to deal with the bullshits. Right, let's perform a seance, why don't we? Oh that's sweet. When you when you that's adorable. When you switch to a dead party member, it just shows the grace and you can't move with them. Did you bring the revival potion? Yes. <laughs> Interesting. Can I check your stats? I can't even do anything when you're... Huh. Well, let's see what happens if I speak to you. Let's, let's heal everyone. And this menu is completely broken. I need to aim underneath Misa to heal Misa if I wanted to select her. I... If I select these empty slots here, it backs out of the menu. I don't have the skill to revive anybody. That's what he's supposed to do up there. That's 
not an aim potion we have. I think we wasted the revive potion. I think he just didn't do his job. What the fuck? So that's just completely busted? Huh. Do we have the materials to make a revive potion? Yamu a Ruku. Let's crawl our way back up here. Nope, nope. We do not have the Yamu. Okay. Tell you what. I don't want to bother figuring out how to actually revive in this right now. I'm sure it's an adventure. I'm sure it's a, a ton of fun figuring that shit out. You know, there's always the possibility that this translation is just... may have actually broken that code completely in the same way that it break, breaks the healing screen over here. Because to be clear, that healing screen is broken. There's, there's extra slots. There's more slots than there are characters in the game. And you have to select empty slots or adjacent slots to actually select the characters you want to heal. That healed Minami, that healed Shiba. I think that healed Misa. Alright. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm putting the controller down. I'm getting the keyboard out. We are fast forwarding. As much as is possible. Remember, every fight levels up these characters. And every attack should be an instant kill. Alright, I have to select all four of these people at the beginning of every fight. Like, honestly, what I'm doing right now isn't even strictly necessary. We don't really need these characters at levels. We could just as easily go into the, the end game right now if we wanted to. But I do want to show off some of the abilities that uh, some of these characters get later in the game. I do want to show some of the later fights in the game. So please bear with me as I egregiously cheat again. Our girls are getting taller. Boys are getting stronger. Remember this returner that gave us so much trouble before? That could have literally ended the run like a dozen times over? Every time I fast forward, imagine like 10 hours in real time going by. And think to yourself, if you're about to complain about, you know, the fast-forwarding or whatever, think to yourself, do I really want to sit here and watch Cass play a game for the rest of all time, basically, for the next, like, foreseeable months to see nothing but this game? And if your answer to that is yes, I can't help you with that. I'm a sicko, but I value my time a, a little more than that, <laughs> sad to say. I don't even know what level these people are at now. I'm assuming higher. Left Davidson says those poor Japanese children just wanted a good go on a fun adventure. Yep. How do I even exist? How the fuck did anyone actually beat this at the time? Strategy guides uh, for all the like obtuse puzzle solutions, and you know. Some people find grinding fun. There, there's people who, like, enjoy the grind. Highlight was built around the idea that this grinding thing is actually fun. That bump attacking and bumping into the same enemies over and over again is an enjoyable way to spend time. That That is the gameplay, is the grind. Different era. People were still amazed that the, there was little people inside their TVs. 
that uh, that acted when they pressed buttons in 1987. And you know, culturally, Japan uh, had different perspective on this sort of stuff in terms of what they tolerated in these games and. Uh, how do I even exist? I guess if I had no other RPGs, this would be pretty fun. Yeah! <laughs> Desert Island game, right? If it's the only game you have, then God help you, you're gonna play it. Uh, Luck Davidson, did you ever read the philosophy behind why there's grinding in Dragon Quest? They explicitly wanted to make the power of fantasy of if you keep working hard and don't give up, you will succeed. I think in this, they just saw that, you know, something like a Dragon Quest happened to have grinding, and they may not have fully understood why. But they, they knew they had to have it in their game to some extent, because that's what the other RPG did. Alright! And with that... Let me update the graphic. Yes, yes. Double-checking my work. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a 30, that's a 30. I forgot to update the jump zones, too. I, I should do those, too. Mammoths... Uh, government, resident, there we go, that's everything, that's, that's everything to do in the game, cool, on the sidebar there. Congratulations to us. We really earned that. No, I don't actually want to get into a fight, I want to go left here, let's go ahead and go to the, uh, the village doctor again. Oh, by the way, I guess you're wondering where the bombs are on the inventory. Don't worry about it. I think they're supposed to increase your break ability so you can potentially break down more walls and doors. But uh, ultimately, they're not necessary for uh, this game. Yes, I've heard your damn story, lady. Now heal everyone one by one. Select Misa, select Ain. And now I need to make sure that everyone is actually healed. Misa is not healed. She got no benefit from talking to this lady. So, that's what I was worried about. I need to select this empty slot to actually heal Misa. Now let's check to see if Ain is healed. Yes, okay. Again, that's a game-breaking error in this translation. Now, there's a couple things we could do from here. One of them would be to go back to Arc City, find the space tower, and uh, go into space, which is what we need the oxygen pipe for. Or, this door here will also take us to space, directly from Mammoth Village. We're in space now. Welcome to space! This is the final act of the game. We'll see how long it ultimately takes in execution to do. I'm going to open up the guide now because this is where I forget the sequence of events, the, the specific sequence of events. We have key 06, do so now. You need to want to visit the dolphin? Okay, yep, yep. And... All right, cool. I know what I'm doing. Upper left of space is where we need to go. I'm opening up a, a map right now. Thank you, A. Schultz, for this. We'll, we'll explore the vast spaciness of space. We can talk to this robot here. He has nothing much to say. I think it's you who has telepathy, right? Now they have some dialogue that is untranslated in this, but uh, you you could potentially get more like story, more information, and like more context on the game and the things you're doing in the game by talking to these people. So I'm going to summarize what they should be saying. Basically, what these guys are telling you is that the City Three computer that you've been rallying against this whole time doesn't actually exist. That was a lie. What it actually is 
controlling everything and sending humans to their apocalypse, to their early extinction, are dolphins. Because this is a cyberpunk game, and cyberpunk fucking loves dolphins. This is a laboratory. This is a large maze. It's made a little redundant by the fact we can walk through walls. But, you know, it's still a maze. So, let's just walk to the doors. We don't want to walk too far out, because if we do, we get kicked to a random place we don't want to be. So, if you want to avoid any and all fights, you can just walk around the perimeter of these screens, and all of the endgame becomes immediately trivial. All these endgame enemies, all these tough encounters they have, kind of go out the window when you can just avoid them completely by walking on the walls. And remember, they wanted you to walk on these walls. Let's pretend that we can't walk on walls. Let's get into some fights, why don't we? With our maxed out party. Yeah, we'll use Psychic Final. With our 9,000 Psychic Power. Let's see if that's enough to kill him in one hit. 54 damage, that's a lot of damage. Alright, you're fucking useless, Shiva, still at this point. Five damage is nothing. Let's see Misa's skill. She, she is the shield girl. She can do... Okay, right. Again, all these abilities here, not the real thing. These, these are all bullshit. These actually don't correspond to what they're supposed to be. I can bring up what they're supposed to be in a second. Uh, by consulting the, uh, the Griever GF guide. Misa's shield. This gives us defensive power for a few turns. Uh, this gives us defensive for the entire battle. So this is supposed to be shield. Last week, which I just called shield 2. Bad shield, which paralyzes the enemy, but also paralyzes the caster. Telepathy, which uh, I call scan. It lets you see enemy weaknesses. It actually doesn't cost any psychic power, amazingly. It's, of course, also completely broken in this translation. So, you know... Now, let's, let's see Ain's abilities. Telepathy, which is finds enemy weakness. That's another scan option. Uh, Death Mind, which this is apparently a restoration spell here for HP. This is Off Mind, which gives us power, raises the attack power of one uh, ally. This is an actual attack. This is actually Psychic Ball. This actually matches. They actually got one right by accident. Micro Kill reduces the attack power of one enemy. I think it's supposed to be like Shrink. Right? This is Psychic Hurricane, so they got two right! She has two attacks! This is supposed to be Bad Telepathy, which is a charm move that makes enemies fight for you. That's very useful. And this is supposed to be called Bad Wave, which has a chance to cause instant death to be an insta-kill ability. It did not work this time. But that hardly matters. None of this matters. Ultimately, the developers shot themselves in the foot as far as this whole endgame is concerned by giving players an option to avoid any combat in this part of the game, like, pretty much, like, all of it. Maybe they'll get into, like, one or two fights by, like, accident. But, like, ultimately... Oh, wait, no, hold on. Misa's not healed. That's why she couldn't use her scan spell. Misa still only has 5 HP. We didn't heal her back in Mammoth's Village. Well, fuck that. I don't care anymore. I, I'm... Misa can... Shove off. She can carry her weight or, or die trying. We took all that time. We put all that effort into getting Misa... We did that whole stupid elaborate quest. And it's impossible to heal her in this goddamn translation. What a fucking game. That's, again, that's not even the game's fault. I shouldn't even say the game. It's, it's fucking translation. <sighs> Fuck that. Up. <laughs>
We are just beelining it at this point. That's one tile where I could have potentially got into a fight. Thank God we didn't. Uh, I think... Ugh. Alright, they're not gonna let me through without a fight. Oh, now they will. Yeah, sure, whatever. I'll take these fights as they come up. I, I think it's fair. We're bypassing so much shit in this game, we should probably see, like, how many fights a player would realistically get into at this point in the game. Playing it the way it's meant to be played, mind you, they give you the power to walk on walls. Yeah, go ahead, Misa. Attack him. Do three damage. Boy, howdy. You can use Psychic Ball, because I don't want to chance the, the insta-kill thing. And just burn XP, or burn Psychic Power on it. I think I only need to use Psychic Shaker. Oh, I wish I could back out. Actually, I want to use Psychic Final on... Again, I'm rewinding, because you can't otherwise back out of menus. Wait, hold on. I selected the second guy, and it's still... Attack the first one. I must have tapped another D-pad button and then it switched the slot because, again, excellent design. And I keep forgetting that this dude's fucking useless. I suspect my party members to like be actually able to do stuff in the same way as other party members in my in my party in a video game. And I forgot I forgot that Misa's also useless. You know, it wouldn't be bad if these two just died. Why didn't Psychic Hurricane do any damage? Oh, it's probably something where, like, they... Robots are unaffected by such low-level spells. Let's do the instant death one to see if somehow this... If we get lucky. No. These are truly miserable fights. To do this legitimately... Ugh! Gross. No thank you. I think I pressed left and right on the D-pad again, which meant that attack was going to whiff. I wanted to attack the second person. So I can get a start on him while everyone else fights this guy. And hopefully, there we go. Go ahead, do one damage, Misa. Hey, that worked. Fuck that. I've really removed the suffering from this equation. I'm, I'm sorry if people wanted to see me suffer during this, but I am no longer in the mood. Let's just get this over with. Now, you may notice these dolphins here. They are important. Despite the fact that they are crucial, that you need to talk to all these characters, or maybe just like a few of them, to actually advance the script of the game. Uh, King Mike did not feel that these characters were important enough to translate. And unfortunately, you need to wait for them to reach the edges of the screen to talk to them. You can only talk to them using telepathy, which means only Ain can talk to them. So yes, Ain is strictly necessary for completion of this game. But you can't jump through walls. But I see one in the top left corner I could talk to. Stay there. Dolphin, don't go! Well, it's fine too. You can go there, at least. Stay. Good boy. Yeah, so these dolphins are uh, the masterminds behind all the calamities and the problems on Earth. And they'd be- they'd love to explain to you why they are the way they are and why they're doing what they're doing. But, uh, not important, according to King Mike. The king of uh, what's important what's not in these games. This one has a lot to say. Stay. Stay. Nope, I used break instead of... Well, that's fine. I don't... No harm, no foul. You have a lot to say, too, why don't you? Alright. Now, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna set this as a jump zone, because I know that I need to do that. 
Now let's go back into the dungeon. Jump again to get to Mammoth Village. And maybe we can try to heal Misa again so she doesn't just immediately die when the next enemy attacks her. And also my other characters need their psychic points restored. So it's a good thing we still have this as a jump zone. Well, let me see what the name of Laboratory. I want to put that as... I just want to make sure I have the right jump zones listed here. It's very important that I have the correct information listed on the side of the screen in this run where I've cheated so egregiously that levels and, and statistics and nothing else matters anymore. Have you heard my story? Yes! You can stop asking. Third slot? Fourth slot? Fifth slot? Six slots. If that didn't heal Misa, I don't know what to tell her. Let's go back into space. The next destination we need to go to is called the Cockpit. This end game is real rough. I, I would say that. If we hadn't egregiously cheated, even if you did egregiously cheat where you're level 30, these enemies still suck everything out of you. It still takes so much to be able to, like, kill these things, and you only have so much psychic power, and unless you're, like, truly twisted to where, you're, like, you have, like, a thousand nuts armed so you can create the psychic healing potion, and even then you can only carry so many of those, and they only restore for so much. So, like, ultimately... This is one of the most miserable endgames in any RPG I could possibly imagine. Just, like, vile. Truly. These purple bits do damage. We're getting electrocuted as we step on these tiles. Want proof? Our HP has been lowered. We're losing, like, a couple hundred points per panel. I don't feel like fighting anything anymore. Let's just walk around the sides over here. Because again, this is what you would do as a player. You, you realize you have these abilities. This isn't the cheating part. This is intended game behavior, which begs the question, why even bother making all this stuff, all these tiles, all these enemies, this whole part of the game, when you've already given players the ability to circumnavigate everything in the game. That's the real mystery to me. That's the real question I have. Like, all the stuff that's broken and unfinished, I get. But they put this feature in the game, and they had to have known it would have broken everything. So at a certain point, is that just them, like, giving up and saying, like, fuck, we don't know how to balance this, we don't know, like, really what we're doing at all. Fine, one fight. Why not, right? Like, that that's the mystery to me. It's just how they landed in this spot here, where the end game is completely trivial because you can just walk circles around it. And yet they put the time into making, like, these elaborate mazes that absolutely no one in the history of the world has ever seen. Because anyone who's made it this far in the game, who's intimately familiar with the mechanics enough to, like, to get this far in the game, whether they cheat or not, whatever the case may be, they ain't fucking walking through the maze. Let's try your insta-kill move again, Ain. Did not work. And again, like, the, the prospect of actually engaging with the game in the way it's meant to be engaged with, actually taking the mechanics at face value, engaging in these fights, doing the grind, Navigating through these labyrinths... It's, it's not worth it. it. You don't gain anything for it. it it's literally made just to, to waste your time. In most of these cases. Like, there's no way you can get to this point in the game and not have these powers. 
The only possible thing that could happen here, the only way they could potentially force you to engage with this shit, is if Minami and, and or Shiba died, and then you would have to go through, like, the whole topsy-turvy thing, right? You have to go through everything, like, because you can't just jump through the walls. But then you'd, like, at that point, you would just jump back to Mammoth's village if, if he's in any sort of danger. Because you know, like, he's the most valuable member of the party. Not in combat, he's useless in combat. But as far as, like, solving these mazes, solve my maze, Superman, integral. Alright, that means it's time to switch to everyone's favorite telepath. I want a quick save here, just because... Made it so far. I think this dolphin in particular has a lot of stuff to reveal, and I would love to just hit the translate button and have this work, but this isn't real language here. This is not real, like... Kana or Hiragana or anything. It is a, a jumble of characters. Because, like, all the Japanese characters in the text got mapped to be other characters when King Mike did his translation. So that, that's just jargon. There's no making any sense of that. There's no way to decode that. Again, I should have played the Japanese version and just translated this stuff on the fly. Or, you know, maybe my friend shouldn't have died. And <laughs> maybe they could have uh, fixed this up for me. <laughs> But, you know, can't always get what you want. Uh, Video Game King says, this is, There's evidence they planned for a final boss and multiple endings that didn't make it into the final version. Given that, they probably didn't have the time to say, set anything other than basic collision properties for later areas of the game. There are multiple endings in this game still. I think there's a missing ending. All right, I gotta set this as a jump location before we... All right, and what is the name of this area? And I do genuinely need to update the side screen so I can remember which which zones correspond to what. Cockpit. Set it again. And... Jump. Back to the laboratory. I think. Am I doing this right? Let me consult the guide. Cockpit. Okay, yes. I'm on the right track, baby. I was born this way. Let's talk to you. This is where they would be dumping all of the lore in the game. Explaining the entire state of things. So what is happening is that we are reaching a truce, basically. The dolphins are willing to stop genociding humanity to, to reverse the things they've done, if we can get along, if we can be friends, if, if, if us psychics can reach an understanding of sorts with them. Which means there's only one place left to go. I fucked up by setting this to a jump location. Like, see what I did there? Now I have two warps to the lab, because I forgot that I need to not be in a residential area, in a safe area, to actually use jump the way, I, the way I want to use jump. Okay. We're back here. Curious. Almost like I have a reason to be here. We recognize you guys as the great psychic army. Please make a decision. Shall we stay together in Aqua? Shall we wish upon another star? Shall we move to the space colony? Or shall we continue traveling? There's supposed to be... Four choices here. There's only three. 
So let's start with the worst ending. Because, by the way, this is the end of the game. You select your ending in the last second. Yeah, we're just gonna select an ending right now. This is the worst ending I'm gonna select right now. Let's start from the bottom. The psychics who struggled to make it so far were wiped out. Whether it was because the hostilities had kept on going, or because they adapted to the human's inherent flaw, a love of fighting, the psychics were not able to forge a partnership with an alien species. Instead, trying to destroy them, the future of humanity still looks grim. And that would be the game. But what if it happened a different way? What about this middle ending? This is where they uh, continue traveling or worship on another star or whatever it is. Okay, I understand. We'll go on without you then. We won't be seeing you again. When the psychics thought of the battles that were sure to continue with their fellow men, they were deeply saddened. Their traveling was over, at least for now. Just a total bummer ending again. At least they're not going to annihilate us. Like, humanity is at least, like, safe from the alien species. But humans are still going to human. How about the best ending? How about we just select the best ending? Let's make a new world together. The old-fashioned notion that mankind was the most advanced creature having been shattered, the psychics set off to develop a new form of living creatures. The future of the psychics? No! All of mankind is looking bright. That's the game! No final boss. Uh, yeah, I see Kijardin joking. Oh no, the final boss has a kill you off screen ability. <laughs> <coughs> I think originally there was meant to be you could select to fight against the aliens. You could fight against the dolphin as like a final boss encounter. And, you know, you'd have a chance to win or, or to lose. And if you lost, you'd get the worst ending. And if you won, you'd get some form of ending. Some sort of neutral, or maybe even the best ending. Who who could say? Who is to say? Bron Bronwyn saying, "Do is Deus Ex Human Revolution ask choose your ending." Yep. I, I always hate this shit. I always say to choose your own ending. Ending. Even the original Deus Ex has choose your own ending. By the way, so don't you put the blame it's strictly on Human Revolution. The original Deus Ex is just as guilty of that shit. But to the point. Uh, <laughs> Oshi wa we are you know. Uh. Obviously, we did not engage with it the way it was meant to be engaged with completely. Past a certain point, we, you just can't. It, I mean, you can. You could sink hundreds of hours into it. But... God. Just... Ugh. I love it. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> I can't believe that the, the game is like assembled in this way. It's incredible. It's like, it's magic. It really is like the legendary Kusoge. This, the legendary shit game. It, it's almost unbelievable, and it's so ambitious, and it's so unfinished, and it has ideas. They were thinking. It was like they just did this blindly. They, it's not like they weren't thinking about stuff. Like the crafting system to create your own potions, that's an idea. I would have just as soon had a shop that sold potions. Like, that's probably a better solution, as opposed to having to farm stuff continuously. But, uh, you know, they, they were thinking, they, they had an idea of, like, this is, this is how players should recover their stuff throughout the, throughout the game. And pick up these nuts as they go along and farm this stuff out. They should get intimately familiar. We, we don't have the biggest overworld in all of JRPGs, but we're going to put things in certain places that players are going to be encouraged to go back and forth between. That's the whole idea with that mechanic. We didn't engage with that at all in this, because the translation is so awful that you can't engage with that menu. It, 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 like, it puts stuff out of order. You don't get to talk to people who give you the recipes for the stuff. That's a translation issue. That's not a game issue. I mean, it's a game issue. It's, it's an issue that you can't just buy a potion and drink it up. That you have to engage with that system. That you have to engage with all the crafting. But there, there's an idea there. And, and the walking through walls and over water, that stuff is goofy. But like it's an idea, right? It, it, it's something, it's interesting. You 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 have psychic powers. I mean, so many of these power fantasy RPGs are like, you know, you're becoming like equivalent to a god, but you're still like held back by shit like walls in the way, whether like they're invisible walls or the walls of a dungeon or whatever else have you. 
You have spells where you can summon knights, where you can put wings on your back and fly into the air, but it doesn't resolve itself in any way mechanically outside of combat. They just make for fun little animations in a, in a standard JRPG. This game dared to dream. This game dared to ask if you were a psychic and you could just phase through walls, what would that look like? How would you do that? How would you navigate with that ability? And they let you do it. <laughs> like, say what you will about how that completely destroys all the efforts that went into you know, designing like the whole end game and all those mazes and labyrinths and these and the whole things around the laboratories and whatnot. Say what you will about the fact that that's wasted effort, effectively, when you have those abilities. But like, isn't it great that you can just walk around those? Isn't it just awesome that you don't need to cheat or anything? That that's just built into the game. That is just a function of the game. I think that's incredible. <laughs> has basically no clipping, and it's just a feature in this 1987 JRPG. Uh, I, obviously there's things in this game that are just, that there's no excuse for, there's no defense for, that can't, like, spin into a positive. The, the way the HP displays the egregious amount of grinding, to where even enemies in the ending game are only giving you, like, 220 XP per kill, and, like, you need tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of experience points to level up by the end, and you need to level up if you want to survive long enough without, like, doing the egregious cheating that I was doing to survive encounters. So that's frustrating, right? But... And, you know, the soft-locking is obviously inexcusable. Any game that allows you to, like, put yourself into a corner completely that you can't escape from, the, the burning through the key cards every time you go through a door, that's obscene. You should just be able to buy one key card once and have that key card work across all doors like in a Metal Gear Solid. That, that's an easy solution to that. That is, that is so simple, it's incredible that, like, they didn't just land on that by accident at this point. So they didn't think that would be, like, more convenient. And those key cards cost, like, thousands of gold, so... I guess you'd want to buy it with the gold you're getting from the hundreds of hours of grinding. Uh, there could certainly be more variety of, of weapons and armor, more places to buy it. Uh, maybe it's better that it's stripped down. Uh, I think, like, Super Highlight has, like, an equivalent level of... Or Highlight 2, whichever Highlight has an equivalent number of, like, actual, like, inventory slots. So, like, it, it made sense, like where they were at the time that think like you only need like two shops in the entire game and in two different towns I, I guess there's some sort of logic with that they had some ideas with like you know the side questing you know like going on such an adventure to unlock misa and ultimately she's useless uh but you know she has restore i guess that's somewhat useful i just didn't have a need to use it in this playthrough so maybe that's me being unfair and again like most of the issues i have with this at this point beyond that are issues with this translation uh which makes it so hard to recommend this game. Let me transition away from this screen. Why don't I? So I can transition to this screen instead. Uh, yeah. I really wish this game, the Switch version of it, had come to uh, North America. It is not currently available. It's only available in Japan, because Japan's the only market that would know about this game, that would recognize it or what have you, right? We don't really have a context for it. Outside of, like, nerds in this chat who are in this Twitch chat right now who would tune into a stream playing this game. Like, y'all know, but, like, the broader world doesn't. I feel like there's a merit to playing through this. Uh, I think that Switch version also gives you the ability to do the same as that cheats I did, where you can start with however much gold you want and in however whatever level you want. So they have anti-grind mechanics in their version of the game, too, in the re-release. So that'll be a really worthy way to play the game. I think it's a really great way to play it. Uh, if you can read Japanese and buy stuff off the Japanese eShop. That's a big caveat, isn't it? But good for the Japanese players who can enjoy it now in some capacity and, and minimize the grind and appreciate the stuff around the, the core mechanics of the combat. Right? Because I think there's merit to it. I think it's interesting. I think there's ideas. And, and I'll, I will always applaud ideas. I will always applaud novel thinking, creative thinking. Even if the execution is a uh, hot mess, boy howdy, they tried. And, uh, again, I, I, what I come back to is I, I wish there's a way for people who are not versed in Japanese to play this. Uh, because this, this translation doesn't fucking cut it. You need to not only have that open, you need to have three tabs on game FAQs open to, to parse, like, what all the menus are supposed to read as. And even then, you're missing out on all the dialogue. And there's a lot of dialogue. And I would love to know what that dialogue is. I would love to know what all the characters have to say. I would genuinely, if they, if there was a improved translation, uh, if there was a, a improved hack, 
if there was the Switch re-release, if the Switch re-release got uh, like a, a, a translation, official translation, I would love to play that version of the game, and I would love to know what all these people have been saying to me this throughout the whole game. Or you know, it would have been great if Rainy was around and if we had uh, been able to do what we wanted to do and, and give this game the translation it deserves, the fan translation it deserves. But uh, again, that's not the world we get to live in. Uh, and uh, we're, we're it's a world. It's a worse world for it for the fact that this game isn't translated for the fact that Rainy's not in it. Uh, I didn't know if I wanted to do this or not. I didn't know if I wanted to fucking, uh... I made it through the stream. I made it through the, the whole stream without, uh... <laughs> without, I got a little steamed at a certain point uh, due, due to do things, but I, I made it through without crying. Uh... <laughs> and I'm going to lose that now. Uh... <laughs> you know, tune out if you don't want to hear, like, a something really sappy and sad, but, uh... I read a few memorials that, that people, uh, obituaries that people wrote. Uh, I, I do have things I want to say about my friend. Uh, she she was way uh, funnier than me and uh, way way more skilled at this shit than I am. She she was way better than me at, at all the shit that I do. <laughs> for one thing, for starters, uh, she was passionate. Uh, she she really cared about these goofy ass games, and uh, and more importantly than that, she she's someone who who really cared about like other people and social issues, and uh, and something I uh. She spent a lot of time on Twitter, on, on X, fucking whatever. Uh, she got into a lot of fights with a lot of people, and she saw it as a sort of public service. She spent the better part of her days arguing with fucking shitheads, with, with neocon fucking assholes, and making them look like absolute fucking fools. And everyone loved her for it, but... Uh, and I loved her for it, but... Uh, it, it didn't put her in a good place. Uh, it put her in a fucking horrible place mentally. Uh, I it was not worth the time. I don't. I don't know what hearts or minds she won doing that. I, I I knew she did it for for her own edification, for her own amusement to some extent, and and to make other people uh, entertained in the process. But you can't subject yourself to that for years on end and not come away like worse for it. Not come away like poisoned by it and and. and Wallowing in that fucking negativity. Uh, so, so don't do that. Uh, would be my advice. Put shitheads away. Uh, combat them. Do what you have to do uh, to shut down people who, who are just pure evil like that. Who, who, who engage in these bad faith arguments and do these things. But don't, don't fucking waste your life on it. Don't spend your entire the fucking, like... The better years of your life fucking just wasting away getting into fucking Twitter arguments. And the other thing, you know, and you know, part of the reason why she's gone is that she couldn't afford to fucking live in this in this dog shit world where where, where housing is not a guarantee. She she died penniless. She died passionate, but she couldn't afford her fucking rent. And that's gotta be a factor in, in what fucking happens. And I, I would have loved to have helped with that. <laughs> I would have fucking loved to have like been able to assist with that. And have my friend with me still. Uh, but again, that's not the world we get to live in. We get to live in a world of shit. But uh, you can't give up on it. You can't quit it. You gotta stick around till the end. You gotta see what happens. You gotta live long enough to make a mark, and then you gotta live longer than that so you can see what that how that mark resonates. Rainy died with a lot of stuff undone. Projects that she wanted to work on, games she wanted to release. Uh, whatever. Like uh, I just wanted her to be around because she was fun to talk to, and, and she made the world a better place 
and she made days brighter when he got to talk to her. Uh, she was a force for good. She was a musician. She, she was talented as fuck and in so many different ways. Beyond just this stupid fucking pointless video game shit. But that was, that was a wagon she, she hits onto at a certain point. This is that's how she hoped she would, you know, be able to make a living in this, in this dog shit world. And it didn't pan out. And, uh, you know, I'll keep streaming these fucking video games. You know, I do love these stupid things, but fuck, they're pointless. This is what happens when I don't write this stuff in advance, by the way. This is, this is what happens when they wing it. Uh, fuck. I could get really negative here. I could get really, I could really go get in the weeds here and, and continue to wallow in it. And just get frustrated and maybe come away with some sort of pithy piece of advice about hanging in there and, you know, having support networks or whatever the fuck. I don't know. I just miss my fucking friend. I miss the things, I'm, I'm sad about things we didn't get to do together, the projects we didn't get to work on, and I'm sorry that someone that was loved by so many people isn't here anymore, and it's a fucking shame, and uh, please be good to people, please take care of the people in your life who fucking need it, look out for them, be more aware of when they're sending out signals that they need help. And, uh, I don't know. Keep living, I guess. I'll keep living. I'll keep doing this fucking streaming thing, writing about these bad games, doing my little bit. It's all I know how to do. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> now that I've commiserated now that I've made y'all miserable for the night now that I've, I've killed whatever vibe or good mood we may have had thank you for watching <laughs> thank you for tuning in and watching this, this whole fucking game play out or as much of it as I was willing to show as much of it as I was willing to engage with uh, we'll be back tomorrow with something something or other and uh I don't feel like raiding anyone after that. Sad to say, I uh, kind of talked myself out of... I kind of put everyone in a sour mood, I know, so I don't really want <laughs> to send everyone to something so frivolous after this, but uh, thanks to everyone who tuned in. Thanks to everyone who supports this goofy Bad Game Hall of Fame. Thanks to everyone who supported Rainy when she was around. And uh, bye for now. We'll be back soon.